Unclothed shared the covers lit tilted her chin up, asking is this expression because your prince has not satisfied your hunger manman, blushed quickly explaining no no, I very full I cannot eat any more her inner voice echoed her words no no I am very full cannot eat any more, no 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 I am very full cannot eat any more flower man man suddenly asked him curiously but when, did your highness regain the use of your legs li stretched his legs this morning she was surprised. This morning Manman wondered could it really be the effect, of that ointment li confirmed my legs were indeed healed by your, ointment jar however the recovery is temporary for, now others must not know can you help me keep this a secret Manman, immediately Repli replied of course your highness's secret is, my secret I will not let anyone else know you can rest assured he tightened, his embrace looking into her eyes saying you and, I our husband and wife rest assured I promise you from now on only, you will be by my side there will be no other women, for this lifetime only you alone, Manman kept repeating this lifetime before she could be moved, by his words for a lifetime Li said solemnly and straightforwardly, but your physical abilities are too lacking you, still cannot protect yourself from from today onwards this, prince will teach you martial arts every day Manman exclaimed helplessly ah her heart raged with anger after tormenting me like this you still want me to practice martial arts in her eyes at this moment the words cruel and vicious were attached to loudly had her sit on his lap teaching her sword practice his voice stern as he reminded her look straight at me hold my hand grasping the sword he spoke up to instruct swing the sword outwards like this use your waist strength after a while of practice he gently lifted her chin asking have you learned, it manman shyly looked straight into his eyes and replied, I have learned it Liz said seriously since that's the case, practice it for me holding the sword she mischievously said yes master she began practicing with soaring spirit Liz smiled watching her intently after finishing her practice manman glided over praising him coyly how, was it your highness Li looked at her praising your swordsmanship is excellent let her stop here for today princess go, and rest manman answered cheerfully pushing him away, Tran Vong back appeared to report, your highness Li seemed, to understand turning to manman saying this, prince has some matters you go back first manman obediently replied then I'll, go bathe first Li watched her figure leave he asked in a solemn voice how is father Tran Vong back reported, your Highness Haran indeed has a cousin named Lim Tan Chai but early this morning she was taken away by people from the Crown, Prince's mansion upon hearing this the Prince drew his sword slightly asking further how is she all related to, the Crown Prince's mansion Tran Vong Bark replied according to the investigation it is said that during a poetry, gathering the Crown Prince coincidentally met Lim Tan Chai and was immediately infatuated with her he, quickly brought her into his mansion Li gazed at the sharp sword if you ask if it's just a coincidence this prince, had just investigated Lim Tan Chai when Lim Tan Chai entered the crown prince's mansion Tran Vomak, continued moreover apart from Lim Tan Chai your servant has found out the crown prince this time not only proposed to Han, but also sent people to the Jongin manor saying he wants to take Han Kan as a concubine Li asked in surprise Hong An, Munan's elder sister the crown prince is not told yet his vigor is extraordinary he angrily thrust his sword into the ground, Tran Vong Bark urged him to leave glancing back at the abandoned, sword his voice slowly carried over it seems the H family owes this prince a favor in the bathing chamber, Manman was soaking in the tub Li drove the carriage inside hearing the commotion outside she turned around to see who it was Lilo at his gaze and said to her didn't expect to find you hewn bathing at this moment she huddled close to the edge of the tub trying to cover, her body then greeted him cheerfully your highness you've come to bathe too she thought to herself, I'm doomed he'll want it again Liz suddenly stood up took her, clothes and approached her manman was frightened, in her heart what's he getting up for he must want it again he wrapped, the clothes around her body pulled her close, and said it's just in time that I've learned something about your sister, and I want to discuss it with you who Uren Manman, was surprised about my sister then he carried Manman onto the, royal bed she cried out in panic but Le gently kissed her don't be in a hurry this prince will tell you, slowly tonight the two lay naked on the bed Manman gazed at him intently recalling that, 
moment he gently stroked her hair and said the crown prince has proposed to your sister Manman pondered that can't be right according to the story Can entered the palace as a concubine why would she be involved with the crown prince she called out softly system the host hack Khan what's going on why is she with the crown prince this time do I need to help the system reported the main plot is proceeding normally the host doesn't need to intervene Manman replied all right then then she remembered oh right the daily mission reward you haven't given it to me yet system today the host has completed the mission you can receive a special lucky bag the jade for reconnecting meridians can restore severed meridians the snow jade can remove scars it's a lucky bag suitable for the hosts current needs the host can choose between their jade for reconnecting meridians or the snow jade manman turned to gaze at lee's face and whispered don't worry i'll help you recover then she told the system I want the snow jade after that day Manman practiced martial arts and calligraphy with Lai during the day at night she helped him apply medicine and engaged in nighttime activities a month later the servants were preparing luggage and loading it onto the carriage Gan reported that everything was ready your highness can depart now Manman helped Lun to the carriage he said to her everything is packed let's go Manman was confused not understanding what was happening as she was pulled onto the carriage she asked loudly where are we going Liz sitting beside her replied to Jade Green Mountain with this prince to escape the heat Manman joyfully parted the carriage curtains looked outside and thought I never imagined a day would come when I could go to the summer palace reserved for the emperor to escape the heat at Jade Green Mountain Madman was surprised excitedly saying so this is the jade green palace it's truly beautiful and cool lip paused his writing to remind her don't look any more there's a banquet tonight hurry and change your clothes manman stuck out her tongue mischievously and replied suddenly she realized lou was still looking at her mom and said shyly your highness i'll change clothes seeing she didn't change her outfit he asked didn't you say you change clothes why aren't you moving manman stood still embarrassed and replied your highness i feel shy with you here la responded matter of factly we've been intimate with each other is there any part of you that this prince hasn't seen yet you're still shy then he stepped closer and hugged manman from behind he whispered in her ear or do you want this prince to help you change clothes hearing this manman turned and called out your Highness Lee kissed her cheek affectionately and said I won't tease you anymore I'll go outside while you change. After Lee left Manman expression, changed as she thought he almost scared me to death I thought he'd really stay and watch me change clothes but if he did help me change she imagined them kissing, passionately him calling her my lady in a hoarse voice his hands removing her clothes Manman quickly dismissed. The thought what am I thinking I'm still young a while later dressed in a splendid outfit Manman worried and said, finally I've changed I should go check if his highness has returned with such strong wind staying out too long will give him a headache, before she could leave she heard an announcement that Jong and Manners young lady requests an audience M was surprised can why did my sister come here could the crown prince have brought her can stepped in and greeted the two sisters happily manman asked curiously why did you come here sister can sighed and replied i came with the imperial noble consort manman thought to herself shouldn't she have come with the crown prince instead if she came with the imperial noble consort why doesn't she look happy manman looked at her with concern and asked asked sister why are you making that face did you come out to avoid the heat with the imperial noble consort and she offended you conan and explained it's not as simple as you think you're at the Chu manor so you don't know what happened at home two days ago there crown prince sent someone to propose marriage after father found out he wanted to agree but grandmother argued with father because of me she got so angry that father felt I'll before he could stop her conan turned away and continued but to avoid further while grandmother wasn't paying attention she sent me to the crown prince's manor so grandmother asked the imperial noble consort to bring me here. Manman listened to Hong Kong and pondered in this matter it was indeed because of Kangan's marriage that the dowager argued with Hu Ding Tong and then she got so angry that she fell ill after that the dowager's illness became severe there. Prolonged serious illness eventually led to her death the female lead suffered a tremendous blow it can be said that she was severely impacted by the dowagers. 
passing she was utterly devastated could that marriage have been, with the crown prince Manman looked at, right in front of her then I must remind my sister pay attention to the dowagers, health thinking this she acted immediately she said, grandmother really cared for you sister and felt ill, because of you the system then displayed a warning detecting their, host's intention to change the plot, warning one after three warnings the host will be punished. The host is advised to be cautious with their actions Manon's face, darkened as she scolded I beg the system it seems, this matter requires long term planning perhaps Manman revealed, a cunning smile in her private room Lish's voice rang out so you want to, ask me for help to prevent the crown, prince from marrying Haken Can Manman smiled and nodded continuously yes, yes yes Lich lifted her chin and tempted, helping is fine but what will the gentle lady offer me in exchange? Manman didn't hesitate then how about a kiss on their, cheek like this lit I suddenly pulled her down onto his body and kissed, her passionately his voice, he said this, is how it should be the next morning the two woke up led it still holding, Manman said Honan's marriage to the crown, prince cannot happen Manman wondered why which was carrying her she is, Conan's blood, sister then he sat Manman down in a wheelchair and said you will, marry this prince if the crown prince marries Quack Conan then in the eyes of others this prince and the crown prince would be of equal status so this marriage cannot happen Luke spoke as he adjusted her clothes Manman thought to herself with this I can rest assured as long as I don't deviate from the plot it will be fine suddenly she realized something was wrong this cannot happen then what was the price I paid last night hearing this large thought to himself there, little fool is only reacting now then, he hugged her tightly by the waist and said it's fine the banquet, is about to start we should depart now Manman, responded enthusiastically pushing his, wheelchair as they departed at the crowded banquet hall of, officials beautiful women danced in the center of, the room music played Manman thought and surprise so this is the lively, imperial banquet she glanced around and said, but here I haven't seen the legendary emperor, yet let me widen my view to see what he looks like the emperor sat, majestically on the throne Manman was surprised to see, this emperor why does he look like the prince regent Madman's heart, stirred as she thought although the emperor and their, prince regent have a blood relation it was from a long time ago, they can't be considered direct relatives as she was about, to think further Litai pinched her cheek and asked what are, you thinking about Manman blankly replied, nothing at all Litai reminded her if you shouldn't be thinking about it then don't think nonsense Manman wondered in surprise how did he know I was thinking nonsense but she still obediently replied understood Litite quickly served her food and said gently all right let's eat before them a few dancing girls performed the emperor glanced at him and said why aren't you eating is the food not to your liking Luke bowed with gratitude your majesty is too kind to inquire I am not hungry so I do not wish to eat he Manman sipped her soup and thought although there are many people here it seems the emperor is most concerned about the prince regent after hearing Litic the emperor reminded him even if you're not hungry you should eat a little to avoid getting hungry in the middle of the night Lit I obediently replied I understand then he slowly picked up some food and et Manman observed his every action thinking eating is supposed to be a joyful thing why do I sense he's so uncomfortable Manman turned to him and said if you don't want to eat then don't force yourself out I'll eat your portion for you Lich caressed her face gently and said as you wish my lady after the food on the table was finished Lich asked Manman if she was done eating with a full stomach Manman replied yes I'm done he then said let un go back but Manman looked up at the emperor and whispered to Lee's that wouldn't be proper the emperor is still here led it said it's all right then he addressed the emperor your majesty I'm feeling a bit dizzy I wish to retire and rest the emperor concernedly asked do you need the royal physician Lich bowed no need your majesty it's just a bit of dizziness some rest will suffice the emperor nodded lit bowed again thank you for your concern I'll be fine after resting, a while the emperor quickly agreed very well I'll have someone escort you back if there's anything uncomfortable be sure to let me know Lish acknowledged clearly then Manman pushed Lish's wheelchair to leave amidst the murmurs around them he simply left the emperor is still here speak softly she whispered as they reached the entrance before they could call for help with the wheelchair chair prince Lao came and said let me help the fifth prince Ling and joined in as well Manman thanked them and then prince Lao lifted Litit along with the wheelchair 
where Prince Lingan called out I've got it but Lingan lost his grip his face paling as he cried are the wheelchair and Lish fell to the ground Manman worriedly called out your highness without thinking she rushed to support him Lish clung tightly to Manman and the two tumbled to the ground together lit I fell on top of her those around them were alarmed the prince has fallen quick help him up people rushed to help led it and Manman to their feet after they were safely seated in the wheelchair Manman worriedly asked your highness are you all right Lish replied from the wheelchair I'm fine Manman sighed in relief that's good as she raised her hand her wound was revealed Lit saw it and quickly asked about her hand before Manman could reply a voice called Tiki the emperor appeared worriedly asking are you hurt Lish answered thank you for your concern your majesty I am unharmed the emperor turned and scolded Ling you useless fool you couldn't even handle this trivial matter what use is there in keeping you around go lock yourself up and reflect for me tomorrow at dawn leave the capital immediately I don't want to see your face again Ling and panicked pleading father emperor I only slipped I meant no harm please forgive me father emperor the emperor ordered without hesitation take him away Lingan was dragged off by the guards as he was being taken away Lingan glared resentfully at Litit seeing this manman quickly stepped in to block his gaze shielding Litit from behind Lish cursed inwardly foolish bon head the imperial physician bowed your highness is unharmed just a few days of rest will suffice I shall take my leave now lit sitting on the sick bed said thank you imperial physician manman saw the imperial physician out please take care suddenly Lich called her over manman approached and asked your highness Lish took her hand and gently applied medicine from a jar onto her wound manman was surprised this medicine Lich explained I asked the imperial fire's position for it earlier don't get hurt protecting others from now on manman hesitated and replied but your highness is not just anyone else manman blushed as she and Litai gazed at each other the atmosphere was sweet and tender Lich pulled her hand embracing her as he advised even I am not an exception you must protect yourself first before you can protect others Manman was about to protest calling him your highness but Lish cut her off your right as for our wager as agreed the loser must accept one condition from from the winner what do you want Manman blushed shyly recalling their wager she remembered that pinky promise indeed remembering this she cheerfully said your leg is healed now I won but what should I ask for let I caressed her chin affectionately take your time no need to rush let her rest first just then a voice called from outside lady new one there's an emergency your sister has run into trouble Manman stepped out and asked what happened Zion and Dron Vong back reported from outside the imperial concubine just sent word after after getting drunk earlier she carelessly had an incident with the young lady of the Jongin Maris at the mansion Lady Han Kan is now in an unstable state so the imperial concubine wishes you to go comfort her Manman exclaimed anxiously the imperial concubine and my sister as the two arrived at the palace and eunuch relayed the emperor summons Lady Nguyen and the Emperor Head Day and quickly looked up the two of them entered and paid respects to the Emperor the Emperor said hurriedly no need for such formalities Nan to see Hen Gong answered yes standing by Lady Nguyen please follow me Man Man replied all right and followed as she walked she thought so this is Jang the books only said he was a gentle outsider but cruel inside I didn't expect him to be so handsome you can't tell just by looking in the end he became the powerful June once they arrived Gong turned to Man Manman and said Lady Nan is here please enter the room she saw her can sitting despondently on the bed Manman hesitated this is Wong he replied the young lady has been crying since earlier no matter what anyone says to her she doesn't respond you try persuading her Manman answered seeing Hang Kong's lifelessness Manman thought though the book said Hong Kong was also in the palace I didn't expect this outcome she approached and gently called out sister system voice rang out host successfully triggered important mission host persuade the female lead her can to abandon thoughts of suicide complete the mission within an hour upon completion a host will receive a red packet reward manman was alarmed upon hearing this she's having suicidal thoughts the system continued if host fails to complete within the time limit the mission will fail host will face severe punishment quickly complete the mission manman looked at her can deep in thought 
Though I don't want to help nor persuade her to accept it I have no choice but to try for now at least but I don't want her to die either this is clearly the emperor's fault why should the victim feel wronged and pain the system reminded her host has 55 minutes remaining host must be careful maintain Manon's image protecting her life is the urgent priority tears and said don't cry anymore honk looked up tears streaming down as she gazed at Manman sister why are you here Manman asked what happened why did you come here in the middle of the night Hong Kong cried as she explained someone told me you were in trouble so I followed her here unexpectedly as soon as I entered they drugged me after waking up I found myself Wong Kong K hugged Manman sobbing Manman thought angrily they used me to harm Kung cried miserably woo -woo. how can I live with dignity after this Manman maintained her composure feigning Disgust why are you crying it's done crying is useless better investigate the truth expose the culprit and get revenge slowly Wong Kong's tears flowed as she said hopelessly what's the point of revenge my purity is ruined I can't live with dignity anymore angered manments golded hang crying over a man having multiple wives why aren't they crying over their own purity instead of crying why don't they just go hang themselves consider yourself having played with a rich and powerful man isn't it good enough that you have beauty anyway he's satisfied even if you die now he won't give you a penny with this thought it's better to think of ways to expose your offender instead of just crying like a useless man man finished she threw her clothes in front of wang all right hurry up and put your clothes on haken looked up at man man and said i don't want to wear clothes here i feel that both myself and the clothes here are dirty man man said are you stupid the dirtiness clearly comes from your offender and those outside man man took her off her cloak Wong Kong hesitantly called out sister seeing her hesitate Manman said disdainfully you're even slow at putting clothes on do you want me to serve you too Hang looked at her firmly and said I won't commit suicide Manman sneered I don't care if you live or die I'm just worried you'll implicate me what can quickly put her clothes on she said seriously I understand but thank you sister rest assured I'll get to the bottom of tonight's incident Manman pretended not to care responding then grabbed her Kong Kong's hand pulling her out of the room let's go outside first noon watched the two of them leave in the palace prince Leetik hugged manman she looked at him intently and said prince i've made up my mind my condition is for you to help me investigate tonight's incident on there bed prince Leetai held manman in a deep sleep manman thought to herself although the prince helps me investigate this matter i still want to do something i can't just sit and reap the benefits she gritted her teeth in anger mainly because hang kong's situation is so miserable the system gave her things related to recent events perhaps this time's gift can help h on kch let me take a look she reached under the pillow she took out a fragrant pouch containing three truth telling pills what is this the system said the these are truth-telling pills if someone takes them they will speak out everything they're thinking for a minute Manman's mouth gate open with this good stuff I can help Haken. Now then she turned to look at Litai affectionately caressing his nose he thinks the mastermind behind harming the prince is still at large perhaps I can use the truth telling pills to catch the culprit who harmed my prince then he won't be hurt anymore the next morning news of Hangan being made a concubine reached the Jade Green Palace not a few in the harm saw her as a thorn in their eye the next day Manman sat in Litai's embrace hand in and practicing calligraphy she turned and asked the prince how is the investigation into my sister's matter going Lich Hun said there's a lead now Manman was surprised before she could ask a voice called from outside the imperial concubine has sent someone to say please come over immediately the empress and concubine Hang Kong are also the Manman wondered why they were looking for her Lich asked her worriedly do you need this prince to go with you Manman then put down her brush firmly saying no need thank you for your kindness your highness I'll go there myself in her heart she was as fiercely protective of him I don't want her less to be mocked and ridiculed to endure humiliation and have to tolerate it Lush silently heard her innermost thoughts he then gently kissed her cheek affectionately saying very well this prince will wait for you at home as Manman was leaving she thought in the novel Lefi and the original owner were two idiots always carrying grudges and getting slapped by the female lead but they never had any dealings with each other why is she calling me over the could it be to cause trouble with Lefi outside an announcement rang out concubine her 
invitation has arrived the Empress is sitting inside with concubine Li Fai Manman came forward and paid respects this servant greets your majesty the Empress the Empress acknowledged her and told her to rise Li Fai sitting beside her suddenly exclaimed oh the little sister-in-law has arrived concubine Li Fai stroked her jade chime with an eerie air no wonder your concubine her consider that round face and figure ha ha truly enviable no wonder the Emperor favors concubine Haken Kong then she couldn't control herself concubine Hang was both angry and embarrassed but she still politely responded thank you concubine Li for your praise as for appearance I cannot compare to when you were young concubine Li I immediately changed her expression Manman watched them verbally spar thinking to herself is this the legendary harem conflict Li I gritted her teeth glaring at concubine Hong the Empress then said enough I saw the flowers in the courtyard blooming so I invited you all to appreciate them we should depart now Manman responded clearly as the Empress left then blocked the path of Manman and concubine Hak warning the servant girls you two wait here let concubine Hen Kong go last concubine Enon gently said you two don't need to be afraid with your elder sister here I won't let you be wronged Madman's heart was moved to tears the female lead concubine Hakan was so kind outwardly showing hatred for her elder sister elder sister please calm down instead of worrying about me think about what you should do alone as the newly favored imperial concubine you're provoking Levi she will definitely take revenge on you I advise you to be honest lay low and behave concubine Haken Khan smiled happily are you too worrying about me seeing her smile Manman was infuriated what nonsense are you saying elder sister I don't care about worrying for you at all don't be so full of yourself then Manman made an excuse about admiring the flowers and ran off concubine Hak Kong watched her leave thinking indulgently the two sisters were so adorable in the flower garden wherever Manman went concubine Hangan would follow teasing her though outwardly she always said she hated her concubine Hong Kong don't cling to me suddenly the figure of concubine Li Fai appeared Manman recognized her and thought I'm dead trying to avoid a melon rind I encountered a pumpkin rind why did I run into concubine Li Fai suddenly the system's voice rang out host you've successfully advanced to the next mission within 10 minutes cooperate with concubine Li Fai to cause concubine Hook and Kong to fall and get injured in front of everyone the reward for this mission is a special red envelope failing the mission will result in painful punishment Manman laughed bitterly and cursed the system dog Manman looked around and assessed the situation although no one is paying attention to this side now how can I complete the mission without harming concubine Hong Kong's situation to complete this mission the system reported mission time remaining eight minutes please complete it quickly host Kong approached challenging concubine Hong Kong don't think that just because you've entered the palace you can become a noble phoenix woman an unsightly person like you will have no good prospects here Manman was furious at the system in her heart seeing Manan's unsightly expression concubine Hong Kong asked you two sisters feeling unwell Manman replied it's nothing concubine Li Fai stood opposite gritting her teeth and anger at being ignored how dare they ignore me concubine Hong Kong asked Manman shall we return first concubine Li Fai immediately blocked them thinking in that case I must make you lose face concubine Il suddenly reached out to touch concubine Hong Kong seeing this Manman sighed inwardly it's over she wants to harm concubine Hook and Manman quickly grabbed concubine Il's wrist and questioned her sternly what are you trying to do concubine Leafy forcefully pulled her hand away saying I saw something dirty on concubine Hong Kong's clothes I just wanted to help her dust it off get out of my way Manman was pushed and fell concubine Hook and Kong hurried over to support her worriedly saying you two sisters Manman went along with the fall thinking I must complete the mission now is the perfect opportunity Manman fell onto concubine Hong Kong seeing the thorny bush behind concubine Hang and Manman gasped in horror thinking those flowers were all thorns concubine Li Fai is indeed vicious then Manman turned to protect concubine Hook and falling into that thorny bush blood seeped from her back the system reported congratulations to the host for completing the important mission concubine one and worriedly asked Manman sister why is your face so pale Manman cried out in pain it hurts so much the empress approached and asked what's going on here what happened concubine Hong was still frantically asking Manman sister where are you hurt concubine Li Fai quickly brushed off any association saying your majesty please take a look they 
simply lost their footing and fell it has nothing to do with me the empress asked again, how did they fall concubine Lefi was again ignored by the empress she pretended not to hear concubinal's words the empress approached and asked concubine Hong gentle lady are you too injured in any way the empress came closer and saw a lot of blood on man man's back immediately alarmed so much blood she quickly ordered hurry and summon their imperial physician and the royal physician after that they went to the imperial palace concubine Li Fei watched and thought to herself making a small injury into a big deal this sister really knows how to act the royal physician came forward and paid respects to the empress the empress impatiently responded all right all right go take a look first concubine Hakin was still holding man when the empress approached and greeted the imperial physician there royal physician assessed the situation and said this wound needs to be treated quickly we must return to the palace, to apply medicine concubine Enon replied, understood the imperial physician's sormanon's back injury and turned purple, with rage concubine Enon consoled, man when sister don't be afraid the imperial physician and royal, physician are both here will immediately return to the palace to treat you man when murmured your highness you're here there. Imperial physician he came close gently embracing her and said don't be afraid I'll take you back then he cradled Manman in his arms and said to the Empress your majesty will take our leave first the Empress replied go ahead as they passed concubine leaf I she bowed and said your Imperial Highness go safe safely Lee coldly glanced at concubinal palace chamber man man's back was covered in wounds and thorns the palace ladies were removing the Thorns man when clenched her teeth in pain Lee cried the palace ladies panicked your highness the thorns are embedded too, deep we can't remove them Lee gently said my lady don't be afraid then he kissed her lips and gestured for the ladies, to hurry the palace ladies understood and replied quickly removing the remaining thorns the last thorn was taken, out the palace lady reported your highness we have treated the ladies wounds she just needs to rest for some time Lee I, Worriedly asked Manman are you still in pain then he embraced her and said to the palace ladies you may leave now the palace ladies quickly left concubine Hongen, worriedly looked at Manman and said sister, I'm sorry if I hadn't needed rescuing you wouldn't have been injured like this Manman still nestled in the imperial physicians, embrace turned and said angrily who do you think you are I just fell carelessly concubine Hongen was about. To say more but Lee spoke in a deep voice concubine her canon if there's nothing, else please leave and don't disturb Manon's rest Manman looked at him in surprise concubine Hong Kong had to leave, saying then you two rest I'll come visit you again tomorrow sister Manman, but Manman refused just worry about yourself don't, come find me concubine Hong Kong cleft sadly Lee, followed and called out to her concubine Hong Kong please wait. A moment concubine Hak Kong thought happily could it be, about us sister looked at her coldly with a warning, I hope you'll keep your distance from Manman in there, future concubine Hang Un asked is your highness blaming, me for not taking good care of Manman I will change in the future, Lee frowned and said this is not the first time last time, at the Jongan mansion you were attacked with sorcery, Manman saved you and last night it was Manan's advice that, allowed you to calm down time and again it's Manman who helps, you and how do you repay her by getting injured, time after time concubine Wong Kong hurriedly said I will change from now on, I will protect her I won't let her get hurt again there, imperial physician said sternly with your current abilities, you can't even protect yourself, who do you think you can, protect he turned and left her saying the weak have no right, to protect others concubine her can pondered repeating, the weak to herself Manman was lying on the bed she turned and, asked Le his concubine, Hakan left he answered yes she has left Manman, thought it's good that she left otherwise if she stayed, she would only feel more guilty she sidled came close and, kissed her hair calling her a fool Manman was, surprised what do you mean by calling me a fool he didn't explain only saying it's not early anymore you rest I have to go out for a while Manman obediently replied go ahead Lee instructed the servants to take care of concubine Manman if anything happens come find me John Wang pushed the wheelchair and asked your highness where are we going now to concubine Lee's place Lee's face dark and she dared to harm my person I want her to wish she were dead dead in the middle of the night there was a commotion outside concubine Lee woke up 
up and asked who is it a servant outside reported your highness the crown prince has arrived concubinely trembled in fear clutching the robe that mad man he's come in the middle of the night not to visit me but to settle scores she hurriedly said quick stop him tell him I'm unwell I cannot receive guests ask him to come another day butler had already entered he asked in a deep voice your highness seems quite well going to bed so early concubinely challenged him you've entered without my permission your highness the crown prince do you not understand the rules Lee asked back the rules does your highness not know the rules you harmed my concubine manman she was seriously injured what rules are those concubinely began explaining concubine manman fell by herself it has nothing to do with me don't blame me for everything I'm not a wicked person for you to accuse me she thought to herself I only wanted to push concubine hang who told manman to rush out in the middle if anyone to blame it's her for being a busybody if she got injured it's her own fault for sticking her nose where it doesn't belong even if she was hurt she brought it upon herself waved his hand ordering bring the evidence here the attendant behind him responded concubine left I was alarmed and frightened asking what do you intend to do clasped his hands together and coldly said I rest her two attendants quickly responded grabbing concubine Lee's arms and forcing her to kneel concubinely shouted a warning how dare you be so in insolent have you forgotten who I am she looked straight at Lind continued do you know the consequences of your actions hearing this the attendant hesitated but Lee insisted firmly what are you afraid of proceed concubine left I was then forced to kneel on the thorny ground she screamed in pain at this moment the emperor an empress hurriedly arrived saying quick quick the emperor asked in alarm what are you doing concubine Lee's legs were bleeding she cried weakly your majesty save me Lee calmly paid respects your humble greets your majesties I am the crown prince concubine manman vaguely heard the commotion outside realizing something was wrong with her concubine she suddenly woke and asked what's going on why are you calling so urgently standing outside said concubine news just came from the rear palace the crown Prince brought men to assault concubine left I their majesties have already gone the hearing this concubine manman was alarmed what help me change my clothes I must go to concubine left I but Xran stopped her but the physician said for the next two days you should remain bedridden and avoid movement yet concubine manman insisted it's fine I know my limits she then searched for something under her pillow this time she didn't know what would happen she brought a precautionary measure she untied the knot of her robe and said let's go we're going to save the crown prince concubine manman and xeran hurried over ning stood guard outside from outside they could still hear the emperor's voice he reprimandedly is my concubine even if you are dissatisfied with her you should not have publicly humiliated her like this you have made me lose face concubine manman thought this is a dead end does the emperor want to punish the crown prince she ran over and told ning sir please inform them that concubine manman requests an audience ning responded clearly inside concubine left I was crying bitterly the empress sitting beside the emperor said impatiently enough Lee sincerely apologized your humble servant was emotional I was about to die I beg your ms twi to punish me the emperor seemed troubled clearly there was a better way to handle this why did you choose the worst approach if this gets out the officials will not let you off easily you will suffer Lee said the officials have been a thorn in my side it's not just been a day or two in any case I'm just a at worst I'll just die the Emperor said worriedly don't speak of death so lightly you are still young your future is long even if you truly cannot rise again you are still the crown prince of the great jaw as for today's incident the Emperor looked at concubine Lee fire and the Empress that's enough you go and confine yourself for a month's reflection one year's allowance will be deducted do not repeat this offense seeing this concubine left I gritted her teeth in anger what I was beaten to this state yet the crown prince is only confined she acted like a victim crying and complaining bitterly your majesty this time the crown prince has truly wronged me I did not push concubine man man she fell by herself I know you always dot on the crown prince and love him like a son no matter no matter what he does you will be lenient with him but the more you indulge him the more arrogant he becomes if you truly want the best for him you should let him understand what he should and should not do what is right and what is wrong the emperor asked then how should this matter be handled according to you concubinely wiped her tears with a handkerchief acting like she understood and said I know your majesty loves the crown prince if punished too severely you will be heartbroken I do not wish to see your majesty heartbroken I only need there 
crown prince to apologize. The emperor thought to himself given his temperament he may not apologize even if punished outside Nan relayed your majesty concubine Manman requests an audience concubine Lef I was surprised concubine Manman isn't she injured why is she coming here Muong approached and spoke to the emperor this incident happened because of me said concubine Manman I want to give concubine Lef I an answer I hope concubine Lee will give me a chance to apologize the emperor quickly agreed then let her in in his heart he thought thought rather than persuading Yi it's better to have concubine Manman apologize Manman entered and paid respects to the emperor the empress and concubinely the emperor said no need for formalities I'm concerned about your injury please stand up and speak Manman sincerely said today's incident was due to my carelessness not only did I get concubine Huadi injured but I also angered the crown prince implicating concubinely she turned to concubine Lefi and said it was all my fault I apologize to you concubine concubine Lefi looked at her with resentful eyes Prince Lheldman's hand and said you need not blame yourself Madam Manman also gently said to the prince this is what I should do she whispered in Lee's ear wait for me I will protect you then Manman poured a cup of tea and put a channing pill into it the pill quickly dissolved into the water she offered the tea to concubine Lefi saying today's incident was my fault I hope you can be magnanimous concubine and not hold a grudge against me the emperor immediately since Manman has sincerely apologized please accept it and drinkly had to grudgingly accept saying yes she then drank the entire cup of tea Manman turned and winked at Prince Le Manman asked concubinely does this mean you have forgiven me Lee used a handkerchief to wipe her mouth stared at her intently and thought to herself forgive you wish after harming so many people I should say something polite but the words that came out were her true feelings Lee suddenly laughed loudly and said of course how dare a person like you apologize on the crown prince's behalf apologize to me who gave you that audacity after saying those words Lee realized and covered her mouth with her hand Manman thought to herself the truth telling pill is taking effect prince looked at Manman puzzled what is a truth telling pill the emperor suddenly asked Lefi what did you just say everyone's eyes turned towards Lefi Manman thought defensively you dare bully my sister and the crown prince let's see if you dare bully him again Lee hurriedly called out your majesty Manman immediately interjected with a sorrowful expression your majesty this is not the concubine's fault it is my fault I am of low status unworthy to converse with a celestial being like concubine Lefi the empress hurriedly mediatedly only misspoke momentarily don't take it to heart Manman sincerely asked is that really the case Lee angrily blurted out of course not I spoke my true feelings I have been long been displeased with all of you Lef I spoke without being able to control herself she was surprised thinking what's happening why is my mouth not listening to me and saying the words I shouldn't say out loud I can't say any more if I say more it will be a capital offense Manman asked Lefi are you also displeased with his majesty speak truthfully Lefi said his majesty deliberately favors the crown prince no matter what mistakes he makes he won't punish him I've heard before that the crown prince is his majesty's illegitimate son today it seems those rumors are true his majesty is so foolish of course I'm displeased with him Lefi quickly covered her mouth after saying that the empress glanced over and saw the emperor angrily gritting his teeth it's over she's doomed this time Manman looked at the emperor and the crown prince then thought I used to notice some resemblance between the crown prince and his majesty she shook her head no stop the truth telling pill will lose its effect in just one more minute the urgent task is to deal with Lee's situation then we'll discuss today's events I will prostrate myself left I also spoke uncontrollably again of course that read Manman deliberately entrap me she's shameless she deliberately his majesty on to make me fall into a pit to harm me and make the empress criticize me in front of everyone of course I wanted to push her down and teach her a lesson the emperor upon hearing this angrily slammed his hand on the table enoughly has a malicious heart plotting to harm you she's unworthy of being a concubine from now on she is demoted to a palak made the truth telling pill had just lost its effect Lee was horrified and begged his majesty to 
spare her life I spoke nonsense earlier those were not my true words the emperor and empress paid no heed and she was quickly dismissed with a wave of the hand Manman was delighted to have achieved her goal thinking fortunately I finally made her speak the truth no one will criticize the crown prince for this matter anymore she looked at Lee and happily said let her go home your highness Lee took her hand pulled her into his embrace and replied I'll take you home my dear back at the mansion Lee looked at her sternly and said take off your clothes Manman was alarmed your highness I'm already like this surely you don't want Lee pulled her down and reached for the knot of her clothes Manman tried to stop him your highness Lee quickly covered her mouth don't move then he removed her clothes Lee continued undressing Manman completely she softly protested your highness Lee gently caressed her back Manman cried out in pain then Lee took a bottle of medicine and and poured some onto his hand he asked Manman this expression question of yours you didn't think I was going to do anything to you did you Madman answered shyly no no of course not but in her heart she thought how vile he undressed me and now he's doing this Lee moved closer to her reached to untie her undergarments and said huskily but your clothes are already off and I did intend to do this which isn't very proper Manman didn't know what to say she only thought how does he seem to hear my thoughts then he reached out and firmly grasped her hand pulled her into his embrace and said since we're already like this let's do something else then he kissed her lips the two were entangled with each other next were the passionate scenes they often shared that night after they were both exhausted they embraced and fell asleep in his dream young Lil was on horseback his father looked at him and instructed listen carefully my son you must survive and return you must survive and return young Lil firmly refused father let's not go his further grasped his hand tightly and said sternly remember after you return and do not trust anyone you can only trust yourself then the horse galloped away with him Lee turned back calling out in vain father his father stayed behind and was showered with a rain of arrows Lee screamed and cried tears streaming down his face father he suddenly woke up manman reached out to wipe his tears worriedly calling your highness what's wrong did you have a nightmare Lee took her hand and said it's nothing in his heart he thought although father told me not to trust anyone looking at her in his arms he gently said said go back to sleep man man nestled lead into his embrace and replied okay Lee thought seriously I want to trust her just this once at the dining table Lee was feeding man man my lady try this be careful it's hot man man thought happily who would have thought being injured could bring such fortune Tran Wang back respectfully reported to the prince last night his majesty summoned her to serve him man man said in surprise not her can doesn't she not want to serve the emperor why did she suddenly agree to serve him could something have happened that I don't know about Tran Vong continued it's also related to the incident where Du was attacked they found a lead for now the main suspect is Lai Evan and there's also a Kai Wang in the Emperor's palace I'm reporting this to your highness my subordinates investigated this matter and besides La Chovan the other most suspected person is Choang the Emperor and Hakan fell silent pondering Hakan sat in the Emperor's embrace listening to him speak so he thinks between Leon and Choang which one plotted against her replied this concubine thinks neither of them tried to harm me then she fed the emperor a strawberry and continued to put it another way the target of the person who harmed me was not me the emperor asked perplexed why do you say that at first I thought the person was targeting me too but today the lead pointed so quickly to Chuang on the contrary I think the person was targeting Chuang they wanted to harm Chu. the emperor praised her saying is indeed intelligent he pulled her closer into his embrace looking at her he said reassuringly no matter the the truth I will not let you suffer any injustice if you're feeling well today go visit your sister and take the opportunity to discuss this with Cho and Khan he glanced at the Emperor and agreed after hearing Tran Wong's report in the dining hall Manman said worriedly my prince I don't believe you would do such a thing but if his majesty investigates this matter it may not bode well for Chung she hesitated but before she could finish Lin interrupted her don't worry his majesty won't believe it Lip pinched her cheek and said if nothing unexpected happens someone will come this afternoon to point us in the right direction that afternoon when Khan visited man told her about the conversation Manman thought admiringly the prince is so clever in the afternoon when her sister came told her the person who plotted against me was definitely targeting Chen you must remind him to be careful lying on the bed Manman tried to maintain an arrogant demeanor saying I know I know then she changed the subject how are you doing in the palace you have 
haven't broken any rules have you there are so many rules in the palace be careful not to make any mistakes that could implicate me con was pleased that her sister was secretly looking out for her she quickly replied i know don't worry sister i'm doing well in the palace although when i first became a concubine i wasn't familiar with the palace rules fortunately assigned coco to assist me with kim by my side she has guided me so now i understand better man man looked at her, and thought Kim Ch Coco is this the Kim Chi Man Man looked at her thinking in the palace by Quack Can inside there was indeed a woman named Kim Chi she was trusted by Hukun but later conspired with outsiders to harm Hukun Can causing Hukun Can to be exiled to the cold palace this was the most infuriating part Man Man thought angrily when I read about it I hated not being able to kill this traitor today she's standing before me in this world if I tell Hong Kai that this woman is a traitor the system's voice quickly warned detected the host attempting to change the script warning issued the host has accumulated two warnings if the host receives more than three warnings they will be penalized the host is advised to be cautious manman cursed did the system can noticed manman staring intently at kimchi she called out sister why are you constantly looking at kimchi coco manman then snapped out of it and replied nothing i was just wondering how capable the person by your side is but from what i see she's just ordinary Kong Kong coaxed her yes yes that's right you're absolutely right sister seeing her can kind like this man man thought sister is so good to me but unfortunately I have no way to tell her the unpleasant truth Le had just entered and overheard this he glanced at her man man then pulled up the blanket dismissing him I won't say anything more to sister I'm tired and want to rest walk and can tucked her in and said all right I'll leave first rest well and I'll visit you again when I'm free she hurriedly left seeing she paid her respects your highness Le coldly said if you have no business don't come here Kongan ignored him and said take good care of her lib brushed her off and went inside calling for his wife madman was in an angry state thinking i really want to tell sister that kimchi is a traitor understood her thoughts he thought although i don't care about hukun's life or death she is still min and sister if something happens it might implicate manman he gestured to tran vang bark to investigate kimchi lee's men closely Followed Kimchi after that day they quickly discovered her suspicious activities instead of confronting her directly Li had her monitored he watched Manman intently reading a book pondering Manman has never met Kimchi yet she could sense Kimchi's issues how peculiar it seems Manman is hiding quite a few secrets I should find time to talk to her it was raining outside in his chamber Li focused on grooming Manman's eyebrows he sternly said don't move Manman laughed it sitchy suddenly there was a knock on the door your highness the emperor is having portraits drawn of himself and the empress the princes are also requested to attend seeing Li remained silent Manman asked don't you want to go your highness Li said they are a happy family I'm an outsider of course I don't want to go Manman felt sad for him she recalled Li's words the other day I heard before that is the emperor's illegitimate son Li hugged and gently kissed her forehead cutting off her wandering thoughts whispering I'll go for First you stay and rest then he left Manman gazed at his back softly saying saying no matter how others see you your highness you'll always be family. To me Le turned back touched he put down his brush kissed her passionately and said wait for me Manman gently replied I will afterwards. Dron Vong Bark escorted Li out of the palace a maid who had been watching hurriedly left Manman practiced calligraphy diligently when suddenly there was a commotion outside Manman come out Manman was surprised it was Li Evan Levin barged in followed by several maids she stood before Manman and loudly scolded her you demoness so you're here what sorcery did you use that day to bring me to this state luckily someone reminded me or I wouldn't have known you cursed me after hearing her Manman thought cursed she speaks true words Leon confidently said this time I'll definitely find evidence that you harmed me and expose your true face so you'll have nowhere to hide when you die then she ordered the maids find what harmed me for your mistress whoever finds it will be great rewarded the maids began searching they trust man man's books around angered manman shouted at them to stop suddenly a maid exclaimed loudly manman thought found what i haven't hidden any cursed objects the maid held up a box saying this mistress needs to find leon smiled happily excellent open it the maid replied clearly then the box was opened and a jade seal fell out clattering onto the floor manman and lyavan were shocked leon stammered in fear kai of wang's jade seal this is treason a sudden voice rang out what did you say the emperor sat on the throne
questioning the woman below Kuang hid the imperial edict and plotted treason Lu Vinilt on the ground wrongfully saying yes this servant found this item from Kai of Wang Palace you can take a look the emperor ordered his subordinate and Ning to bring it over Ning acknowledged the order clearly Mammon was about to step forward to explain but the prince grabbed her hand and shook his head signaling her to stay quiet after examining it the emperor said this jade seal is a fake Mammon was shocked unable to believe her ears it was Leon below with a malicious look accusing the prince even if it's fake it was found in Chiang's place Chiang made this fake jade seal himself your majesty cannot let him off so easily the emperor scrutinized them carefully titch do you have anything to say he raised his head and said your majesty although the fake seal was found in my place it doesn't prove it belongs to me i know who that person is i've already prepared for this he said i've sent someone to bring that person here manman eagerly volunteered your majesty i'll go to the emperor agreed and go she hurriedly went out thinking although i don't know who harmed the prince this is a big matter I should go and see to put my mind at ease he watched her leave silently calling her a fool as soon as Manman stepped out she was stunned by what she saw before her own o on the ground lay an unconscious maid she asked Tran back the person who harmed the prince is kimchi then heard the correct answer Manan's expression became tense this kimchi is very cunning just bring her in like this if she causes any trouble it won't be a good she took out a truth serum from her sleeve then she said wait a moment after that she pinched kimchi's mouth and stuffed it in em all done she stood up happily and said you can bring her in now Tran Vang back carried kimchi and yes sir he replied clearly kimchi she was thrown to the ground the emperor looked at the unconscious person and asked is this the person you mentioned who harmed the prince wake her up the subordinate obeyed and slapped her to wake wake her up Kim Chi slowly opened her eyes her vision blurry at first gradually the image of the emperor sitting high above appeared she was startled and immediately sat up screaming your majesty the emperor solemnly began questioning her earlier someone found a fake jade seal in ch wong's place tell me does this have anything to do with you in her heart she was panicked thinking when i hid the jade seal i was very careful surely no one discovered it how did the emperor find out i can't admit it at this moment the truth serum took effect kim chi loudly said the fake jade seal was hidden by a maid in chiang's place someone bribed the maid to make the maid harm to the emperor was suspicious of everything now with an eyewitness it became more convincing indeed someone is trying to frame him tell me who bribed you her face darkened and she hurriedly covered her mouth panicking in her heart what's going on why can't I control my mouth her mouth suddenly blurted out seeing the situation was not good she resolutely decided to bite her tongue but it was too late I can't say anymore if I continue not only will I die but my entire family will die two men men was shocked by this sudden action oh no she wants to commit suicide Kim she fell heavily to the ground everyone around was horrified and didn't have time Time to react the emperor anxious ordered the officials we can't let her die summon the royal physician i must know who is behind her who is framing cho and the officials anxiously replied clearly yes sir man man frightened was held by leech in his arms after examining kimchi the royal physician reported her condition with her current state it is impossible to investigate further the emperor angrily waved his hand take her away and so the matter ended the let it was pushed back by man man she lay in his arms and said unexpected in the end we still don't know who was behind it it's a pity Kim Chi was about to tell the truth but committed suicide instead although she's still alive there's no way for her to speak anymore he kissed her hand and said it's all right as long as you're alive one day we'll find out who was behind this he looked at her affectionately and said I really want to know what kind of medicine you gave Kim Chi to drink she forced a smile and said if I were to tell you that I only gave her a sugar pill would you believe that lie how could I fool you like that you don't seem like a fool at all he said you think I'm like a blockhead in her mind she agreed but outwardly she flattered him saying your highness is wise and remarkably skilled in martial arts not foolish at all after saying that she felt embarrassed for him she changed her sitting position to face him properly if your highness insists on asking then I won't hide it anymore actually she made a radiant expression and said proudly I am a fairy who is descended to the mortal realm after she said that the atmosphere seemed to freeze 
Freeze awkward silence Leech was speechless so Manman continued speaking as an immortal I naturally have some special abilities the truth pill is one of my special abilities his gaze became sharp he said coldly tell me the truth frightened she quickly said it's the truth pill anyone who eats it will speak the truth for a short time really I'm not afraid he pulled her into his embrace and asked did you also make Lyo eat it she nodded he hugged her tightly and wondered where did you get the truth pill from she lied without blinking from a transcendent immortal but I can't say who specifically in her heart she revealed I absolutely won't let your highness know that the system gave it to me he could hear her inner thoughts there system what is that he frowned pondering over the word system she suddenly remembered something and said that's right your highness this time when Lyo barged into our residence I'm certain someone must have instigated her he responded him I've already sent people to investigate this matter contrasting with the peaceful night in a deserted front courtyard and her maids were tied to a tree trunk the maids behind were being whipped incessantly their agonizing screams echoing Tranvomar wiping his sword with a cloth said to Lyo Lyo when you led people to barge into the prince's residence and frightened the concubines did you ever consider the consequences lash who cried begging please don't kill me i was wrong i won't dare do it again huho tran vong bark interrogated her coldly tell me who gave you the courage to go make trouble at the prince's residence sometime later in let eat study tran vang bark reported everything Leetik said slowly so it seems lio came because on chang and disavan reminded her that manman had drugged her tran vong back replied Yes Li Tai's expression was pensive so who masterminded this plan was it on Kai Orisvn or someone else Tran Vang back standing outside relayed your highness subordinates have received news Kim Kai has committed suicide in prison Manman thought suicide and said doesn't this mean he can't find the mastermind behind this she said anxiously your highness I can hear the worry in her voice he quickly asked what's wrong she said worriedly for him Kim Chi has been killed to silence her what should we do now worry was evident on her face if we don't uproot the problem I'm worried the mastermind will strike against you from behind he seemed to have an idea asking how many truth telling pills she had left she quickly replied only one pill remains he gestured for her to show it to him Manman took out the truth pill holding the pill in his hand three suspects with ill intent came to his mind who was truly the mastermind behind this he ordered his subordinate Tran Vong Bark tomorrow morning present this wine to the emperor have the imperial tutor a hint to the emperor that tomorrow night is suitable for a banquet Tran Vong back acknowledged the order now man man guessed his upcoming actions excitedly saying your highness you want to slip the truth pill into the wine at tomorrow night's banquet he pinched her cheeks and said you guessed it she pouted and cried ho then he carried her his voice her official matters are settled now for husband and wife she blushed looking at him in shock they kissed passionately she tightly embracing him within the study spring filled the air sounds of love making echoed incessantly the room's lamps gradually dimmed behind the thin curtain the two and mind merging as one outside the palace lanterns were lit brightly inside a grand banquet was taking place manman leaned over and whispered deletic your highness who will you have drink there truth pill he didn't answer only glancing at the table beside the manman followed his gaze suspecting it was her manman asked seriously is it her but it seems she doesn't intend to drink wine indeed as manman observed the wine glass on her table remained untouched he leisurely picked up food for her as he said no need to rush she should eat first the imperial tutor respectfully presented a cup tea for the sun institute the empress explained non institute i heard you can't drink wine today so I prepared red date tea for you drink it quickly before it gets cold the emperor agreed indeed this is the empress's thoughtfulness non don't waste it non couldn't control herself trembling as she took the tea cup she hesitated thinking this red date tea is from the empress the wine was prepared by the prince the empress isn't like the prince so it should be safe on the other side lick smirked seeing her fall into the trap she decided to drink it all in one gulp as he had planned he calmly asked none instant why aren't the six princes here tonight the drug was taking effect she blurted out I didn't let them come I was afraid you'd poison the wine she was horrified realizing she'd lost control of herself what am I saying I've fallen for the trap lick interrogated sternly we have no grudge against each other why would you think I would poison the six princes non's face turned pale as she hurriedly covered covered her mouth but she couldn't stop there words 
from coming out who said we have no grudge before I wanted to use kimchi to place a jade figurine in your quarters to harm you not only LCK and Manman but everyone heard what she said the emperor immediately stood up thundering such audacity and it was you who did it was it you who killed kimchi you dared to plant a spy in the imperial harm Nun was flustered thinking she couldn't speak if she revealed him Lick didn't expect she was thinking of someone else she thought as she took the hairpin from her hair I have committed such a grave crime death Death is the only path if I take my life here I can atone and protect any she trembled gripping the hairpin tightly tears streaming she confessed to the emperor everything was done by me alone please spare I the emperor anxiously ordered his subordinates stop her quickly Manman was terrified witnessing this scene Mung didn't hesitate using the hairpin to attempt suicide the same events had unfolded at the prince's residence Manman was drenched in sweat from the nightmare the image of Nun at the banquet taking her own life appeared again Lick held her concernedly asking did you have a nightmare Manman answered in a dreamy sorrowful voice she faced him closely trembling as she said I dreamed of Nissan committing suicide she spoke sincerely from her heart although I've witnessed my grandparents passing away before they were my own kin moreover they died of old age unlike and reading her innermost thoughts he comforted her saying the first time I saw someone die I was seven years old she lay in his arms softly calling Prince he gently recounted that year my father took me out to play during Ching Ming on the way we encountered some bandits my father took out a sword and killed all the bandits I was so scared I hid outside the carriage trembling he closed his eyes saying so there's nothing to be afraid of even if it's frightening there dead are not scary I'll always be by your side she was touched calling him prince again in her mind she pictured the prince trembling in fear then he suddenly pinched her cheek playfully teasing what are you thinking about she smiled happily seeing this he took the opportunity to move closer saying since you can't sleep tonight his hand misbehaved pulling at the strings of man man's robe let's do something else her robe was undone and they kissed passionately they spent the whole night making love the next morning it was raining heavily in the study man kept rubbing her lower back groaning inwardly looks like I should go to bed early from now on recalling last night's intimacy she couldn't help but blush with regret not only was she completely drained she looked at her rumbling protesting stomach she hadn't even had time for breakfast causing her hunger she decided to grab an umbrella and go out let me go out and see if there's anything to eat just then a little boy bumped into her she was a bit surprised by the child's presence a kid manman suddenly recognized who this child was isn't this the sixth prince didn't they say they'd take the little one to concubine Shu? why is he alone out here she asked puzzled why did your highness suddenly run out like this where are the servants who were with you why didn't they follow you she observed lex silently assessing him the little boy was completely drenched she used the umbrella to shield lex's body from getting wetter then she led leeks into the kitchen she let him warm up by the stove while she cooked some ginger soup saying it's fortunate there's a small kitchen nearby this way your highness can warm up and avoid catching a cold she brought a bowl of ginger soup and placed it before him saying here drink the ginger soup first the little boy remained silent not responding manman looked at him worriedly suddenly the poor child said I don't want to drink ginger soup I want to eat soft tower buns she smiled warm coaxingly kex then your highness drink the ginger soup first I'll make soft taro buns for you the little boy was quite obedient cooperating he blew on the soup and drank it looking adorable she felt flustered from the cooking catching la ex's attention she turned to the little boy and said it'll be ready soon then five soft white steaming buns came out of the oven as soon as they were done she hurriedly brought them to the child all right eat up quickly leek's eyes widened as he looked at each bun she patted the little boy's head and asked her they delicious suddenly Lex's eyes welled up with tears and he said in a trembling voice they're not like the taro buns mother made wow why miss mother so much she was taken aback by the child's words his wailing cries couldn't help but make her sympathize she gently embraced the little boy comforting him the child kept crying missing his mother she tried to act him deliberately inching towards the round buns threatening don't cry now if you keep crying I'll eat all the taro buns myself she thought she had successfully lured the child by 
but unexpectedly it made him cry even louder outside let it heard the loud crying and worried what's going on he wheeled himself over and called out to man Manletic fell silent watching the big and small figures competing to eat Dara buns Manman was happily eating while the little boy ate and cried wah he was at a loss his expression f full of confusion Leet suddenly asked is there a bun eating contest going on here Manman said in surprise your highness why are you here la who had been engrossed in eating suddenly stopped the little boy's face turned angry as he said you're there villain who killed my mother the furious child threw food at Leet shouting murderer I'll kill you Manman rushed to protect Leet your highness be careful the bun flew like a bullet towards Leet it she stretched out her arms carefully Manman used her body to shield Leech out like X was startled and exclaimed ah the child immediately grew angry who's stopping me are ah, you get out of the way Manman Manman tried her best to block and protect Leech by all means I won't move aside I absolutely won't let you harm your highness Leech's enraged scolded you you get out of the way she retorted I won't move aside let it grabbed her by the nape and pulled her behind him to protect her Leech in an unhappy tone questioned the why are you making such a fuss is it to avenge your mother the child angrily exposed Latich crime you forced my mother to her death you're a murderer he gripped the arm rests tightly restraining himself he said I forced your mother to give up her life for your future she didn't hesitate yet you falsely accuse me she killed herself when everything was exposed because of you you're the one who truly killed her the atmosphere between Lee Titch and Leeks became tense his words exerted an invisible pressure on the child you're the real culprit who step by step pushed her into a dead end the child was rendered speechless he couldn't accept the truth shaking his head in denial no you're talking nonsense let it looked at Manman who tried to console the child and added if it weren't for those small weak forces you wouldn't have ended up in this situation if you want to avenge her you should think carefully about your position in the palace Manman said gently your highness the past cannot be undone your mother shouldn't have paid such a heavy price for you she only wanted you to live well you should cheer up the child was heartbroken you're talking nonsense I don't believe it then the child cried loudly and ran out you're all deceivers Leet lowered his eyes and said slowly does she think I'm being heartless she understood his intentions as he said seriously I don't understand your highness's meaning but the young prince has lost his mother's protection if he remains naive and simple he won't be able to discern those with ulterior motives they'll exploit the matter of his mother to turn him against you to deal with you rather than keeping him in the dark it's better to tell him the whole truth that may help him grow stronger she took his hand and said you said that for his own good he thought to himself unexpectedly she truly understands me he smiled slightly and said perhaps so suddenly his voice grew hoarse the young prince has returned next we should deal with other matters she asked in confusion what other matters are there now the small kitchen was quickly sealed off from the inside he pinned her against the wall and said suggestively let me clean you up saying that he licked and sucked the honey from the pastry that had gotten on her she blushed and said this little bit of sweetness you could have just asked someone to clean it off he gripped her hand tightly and said I'll clean it better then followed countless kisses all over her body suddenly there were voices outside didn't his highness come this way how did he disappear Manman was startled to hear the other voices she hurriedly said your highness there are people but he didn't stop continuing to kiss her as he said when cleaning one must stay focused his response was a deep kiss followed by a series of indescribable activities the night tran von bark reported the situation to prince lee Titch after the investigation by the military commander we've been able to confirm that the spy planted in falong key is lu the trung he has fled and is nearby we suspect he may try to assassinate you tonight your highness he asked suspiciously tonight suddenly worried he said oh no man Manman meanwhile Manman slept peacefully with kiss marks on her neck from their love making a cold sharp blade silently appeared pressed against her neck you are the trung from Falong here to assassinate Manman she woke with a start terrified and cried out you Lee the trunk threatened if you move I'll kill you immediately he coldly asked tell me when will the prince come looking for you Manman suddenly realized this person had come for Prince Ha she calmly replied I don't know Lu the trunk angrily growled how could you not know you're the woman the prince faced as most he even brought you along to Jade Green Mountain you'd better obediently answer my 
question as he spoke he slid the blade across man man's skin threatening or don't blame me for being discourteous she said confusedly I really am not the woman the prince favors most he brought me because everyone else was afraid of him no one else agreed to go with him I swear the prince will not come looking for me if I'm lying may I be struck by lightning as soon as she finished speaking a thunderous boom sounded from outside she froze in terror the trunk sneered derisively she squeezed her eyes shut awaiting the blad's descent Lou the trunk ray said since you don't want to tell the truth don't blame me waiting for the footsteps outside Lou the trunk and Manman both sensed someone was coming Lou the trunk panicked thinking the footsteps sounded like many people were approaching Manman felt relieved your highness is here she saw Lou the trunk expression turned wary thinking it's clear this man came here for the prince but when he saw the prince leading many people did he have that expression could it be he originally intended to ambush the prince when no one was around she glanced at the sword hanging on the wall an idea suddenly came to her mind if that was the case she immediately began acting persuasively saying you cannot kill me the prince has brought many people now you certainly cannot take action against him but if you take me hostage to threaten him then you might still have a chance to succeed he asked really didn't you say the prince doesn't favor you even if you're taken hostage he probably wouldn't care about your life or death she fell completely silent recalling she had indeed said that to him earlier she had forgotten that point she began acting again forcing out tears speaking in an aggrieved tone of course he wouldn't care about my life or death but he cannot disregard the life of the child in my womb when she said those four words child in my womb it left him stunned she shyly continued you should know until now the prince still has no children if I give birth to a child whether a son or daughter it would be of great significance to him using me to threaten him would be far more effective than killing me the footsteps outside grew clearer manman sensed they were about to arrive and urged hurry and decide side the trunk was slightly surprised having never encountered a hostage like this before he hesitated for a moment he grabbed Minan's arm warning her I hope you're not trying to deceive me a maid's voice came from outside madam are you awake in the Leo the trunk whispered to Manman whom he held if you dare try anything I'll kill you immediately she said in a low voice rest assured I won't joke around with my own life the sword was again held close to Minan's neck she calmly asked I just woke up what's happening outside Leo had arranged guards to monitor the the situation the maid outside inquired madam you haven't eaten anything tonight Leah observed the situation with a solemn expression the maid continued the prince was worried you were hungry so he sent someone to bring you food madam could you please open the door inside Lou the trunk tensed up gripping the sword tightly in his hand he pointed the sharp blade at Manman threatening her tell them to leave Manan's voice came from inside I don't want to eat please leave don't disturb my sleep the maid said confused but this is the prince's kindness dismissing them like this may not be appropriate manman being controlled replied I said leave didn't you understand do you want me to get so angry that I have a premature birth outside everyone was utterly astonished by this new information the maid exclaimed in shock the madam is pregnant Le gestured for the maid to leave the maid called out in understanding madam please don't get agitated pregnant women must remain calm and keep a gentle demeanor at all times the maid said she would ask them to leave out outside people could be heard moving away inside Lou the trunk whispered in Minan's ear he ordered the prince to come in here she followed his command and called out loudly yes I think I heard the prince's voice your highness are you the could you please come in Tran Wang worriedly said your highness it's dangerous Le pondered silently man man wouldn't want me to be in danger he is who she wants he gently pushed the door and said I'm here now I'll come in right away Lou the trunk waited with a smug expression suddenly an arrow flew in Lou the trunk dodged it inadvertently creating an opening for Manman to break free she quickly grabbed the sword unsheathing it Manman angrily said how dare you use me to harm my people I'll show you the price you have to pay Lou the trunk was taken aback the sword moved swiftly leaving behind after images and Lou the trunk lay unconscious on the floor his face bruised and battered cran back and Lou were alarmed to see this Lou thought my lady is indeed formidable Manman held the sword her body trembling tears and mucus streamed down her face from fear
fear, she dropped the sword rushed into his embrace and cried for comfort Why you scared me to death my love he comforted her tenderly it's all right I'm here I'm here Tran Wang Bark silently ordered someone to clean up the scene someone dragged him out everyone quickly left the flickering light emanated from the lantern man Man lay in Lee's embrace her eyes still wet with tears he suddenly lowered his voice and asked suspiciously so I'm going to be a father soon she explained embarrassedly no your highness I just wanted to deceive receive him to find an opportunity to hit him Liz stood up holding her he walked slowly towards the bed comforting her it's alright if you've said so it means Manman really wants to get pregnant doesn't it he continued seriously if that's the case I'll make it happen for you she blushed and panted I don't he sealed her lips with a sweet kiss that night the two became one in sweetness the next day news of Wan Yan Yan's pregnancy spread throughout the Jade Green Mountain everyone in the mansion discussed it the news quickly reached the Emperor's ears the Emperor was overjoyed and bestowed many rewards seeing this many concubines also sent many tonics in her room Mad Manette birds nest soup until her belly was full she couldn't have imagined this before it was just an idea she came up with in haste now everyone thought she was pregnant if the Emperor knew she wasn't pregnant would that be considered deceiving the ruler did she have to actually get pregnant to resolve this matter someone outside announced HPD's arrival Manman was startled while eating thinking of one and what was she coming here for could she also be coming to see her pregnancy and give gifts to arrive cheerfully and asked her sister I heard your pregnant sister Manman cried inaudibly in her heart she screamed frantically ah she did come to ask that question nevertheless she maintained her composure and welcomed her no I am not pregnant yet who exclaimed in surprise after a while Manman recounted the whole truth to her she told H to do everything that's how it is Manman pouted it was just a temporary scheme I'm really not pregnant I'm not actually pregnant what you comforted her she handed her a handkerchief and said I see so you've been wronged little sister she gently patted Manan's head and said softly don't worry too much about this the prince regent has just been summoned by the emperor he will surely explain it for you Manman thought before leaving the prince regent told me not to worry suddenly she noticed the hand on her head she immediately brushed it off who allowed you to touch me I didn't permit you to touch my head but do found her adorable she obliged all right I won't touch you she thought delightedly my little sister is so cute man man paused when she heard her do say by the way last night the six princes fell ill with a fever people in the palace say it's not looking good man man began to worry about the six princes the little ones are not doing well who had been there for a while while so she made an excuse to leave it's not early anymore considering the time in a moment the emperor will summon me to serve him Manman didn't stop her but told her go 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 before leaving Huadvu reached out and caressed Manan's cheek she said cheerfully I'll come visit you again when I have time after saying that who hurriedly rushed out she only managed to leave behind two words goodbye goodbye Manman said curtly she angrily scolded pinching my cheeks at this moment Leet I entered in a wheelchair who angrily angered my beloved and made her so upset he appeared with a gentle expression when Manman saw him she cheerfully called out Prince Regent he approached her with concerning what's wrong you seem to have something on your mind she leaned into his embrace and asked softly I heard the six princes have fallen ill he replied yes I was told they're not eating or drinking anything now they just lie there and refuse to take medicine do you want to see them she said with teary eyes yes I want to see the little ones I want to see them the six princes are so pitiful their mother has passed away and now they're seriously ill although I've only met them once I think I might be able to persuade them to take medicine and eat something he hugged her and consoled her all right then let's go I'll have someone inform the imperial noble consort she joyfully thanked the prince regent he seemed displeased and said is just saying thank you enough understanding his intention she took the initiative and kissed him thank you prince regent let me get ready for a bit as she was about to leave he suddenly grabbed her hand he forcefully kissed her he pinned her against the wall kissing her passionately for a while before being satisfied this is how the imperial noble consort should be treated madman thought sadly I didn't expect the little one to fall so ill after just one night apart the woman beside madman was the imperial noble consort the foster mother of the six princes the imperial noble consort spoke I heard you say you have a way to help the six princes this time I'm counting on you madman replied yes your highness she approached 
approached the sick bed and softly called the six princes the little one clutched the blanket tightly refusing to open his eyes she fell silent realizing the little one was pretending to sleep she sat down beside him and said I thought yesterday's events would help you understand some things but it seems you're still just a child the little one immediately flared up scolding her I'm not a child man man calmly took a grape and said provocatively but only a child would use this method of not eating or drinking to threaten others she peeled the grape slowly as she offered advice if you were truly mature facing this situation you would first nourish your body then you could think of ways to fight for your own power she calmly ate the grape lishu didn't respond but turned inward she then took a pastry from the tray beside the bed and ate it the crunching sounds continued Le both angry and annoyed shouted if you want to eat go eat outside don't disturb others here she didn't mind the little one's attitude and said I won't go out there I want to eat here she deliberately teased Liu's anger the little one Le was so angry he almost cried Manman said again you said you're not a child but only a child would cry at the slightest thing then she suddenly offered the pastry to tempt the little one have a bite I won't tell anyone the little one embarrassed and blushing refused I won't eat she said provocatively you really won't eat this red bin pastry is delicious fragrant and sweet it melts in your mouth the little one too impatient raised his voice his little mouth stuffed full with the soft pastry watching him eat heartily she said seriously the six princes the six of us are not your kin I'm not easily moved but your life was risked by the princess to save if you truly wish to torture yourself the one who would suffer most is the princess she sighed and asked do you really want your birth mother to be restless even in the grave the little one at while feeling vexed she gently offered him a cup of tea the little one snatched the teacup in an unpleasant manner what's with that look of yours do you really see me as a child she replied cheerfully you misunderstood seeing how you ate I couldn't help but recall little by it's just a bit of nostalgia the name little by that she mentioned was a greedy little piglet she laughed heartily meanwhile Le wondered who little was without answering she stood up and said that's enough you've eaten and drank I'll go back now the little one was called caught off guard by her swift actions leaving him no time to react you unruly man when the little one grumbled recover well from your illness when you're better you can come find me to play I'll treat you to some grilled meat the little one shilly replied okay night had fallen accompanied by a light drizzle man and gazed pensively at the scenery thinking I didn't expect to anger here so long it's gotten dark already as she stepped off the porch she thought the prince is still waiting for me I should hurry back suddenly she glanced over and saw a tortoise nearby Lou with a gentle expression held the tortoise in his hands quietly waiting to escort her home manman overjoyed ran to Lick calling your highness why have you come here your highness he said holding an umbrella against the rain to take you home her heart felt unusually warm since her grandparents passed away no one had waited for her to come home from a young age her grandparents raised her not her parents she looked at him and thought I didn't expect to stay out so late he took her hand and said let's go home the two returned together her voice chattering endlessly your highness tomorrow I'll make you some soft tarot cakes and conveniently some fruit preserves for you whatever you want it's fine with me because it's you back in their warm room manman was carefully drying his hair she sighed even with the umbrella you still got wet from now on your highness needn't come get me your body has just recovered if the cold air enters again it won't be good he refuted what she said I'm not that frail she was about to say more but knowing her nature he wanted to prove it to her if manman doesn't believe me you can try to see if I'm weak or not as if given permission she asked oh I can try try how without answering he pulled her into his arms surprised she let out an R pinning her beneath him he boldly said try like this then he planted a passionate kiss on her lips their clothes gradually came off in contrast to the rainy weather outside carrying a chill raindrops pattered on the flowers in the garden a night of passion passed by at first light Minan's voice could be heard calling your highness an unusual peacefulness filled the prince's residence manman happily came holding a lollipop to show off come try the fruit preserves I made myself manman personally fed him a bite from outside came an announcement for the prince he indifferently replied come in while he was still gently speaking to manman sweet isn't it she happily accepted his praise my skills are quite good the attendant respectfully announced your highness an imperial decree has arrived manman was a little surprised to suddenly receive a decree she said with a worried expression your highness I'll accompany you to receive the decree he agreed the imperial decree. 
was read aloud to the prince Lee received the decree just bestowed elsewhere the crown prince Liu Lin was enraged upon hearing the unfavorable news what did you say Lin angrily confronted the emperor not only summoned that crippled thing to accompany me to the south to aid the disaster victims but also entrusted him with command and the imperial tiger tally for that the crown prince gritted his teeth the emperor trusts him so much if he weren't disabled he would probably give him the imperial tiger tally as well allowing him to command a hundred officers instead of me to the emperor I'm still inferior to that after all lining Ji gently tried to plate the crown prince your highness calm down she said insidiously wasn't it your wish to eliminate him in the capital you had no way to make a move against him but in a place far from the emperor the crown prince gently took lining Ji's hand and replied you're not wrong this time is indeed an opportunity for me on this trip south I will definitely make sure he dies a wretched death outside the rain pool heavily the carriage raced along swiftly through the cold rain inside Manman and Tatli leisurely played chess. He said this trip to the south the journey will be extremely dangerous you don't need to come she replied if I don't go your highness will will be bored along the way moreover I heard the emperor asked you to escort the crown prince because the officials sent south before were all killed by mountain bandits she leaned her chin and whispered I'm not at ease he seemed a little surprised by her words. He quickly took her hand in embraced her and seriously asked really the carriage wheels rolled making rumbling sounds suddenly it break sharply inside the two tumbled forward from the inertia ah he asked worriedly are you all right she replied chilly blushing um he gently parted the curtain to look out the carriage was in a noisy argument the servant questioned was it left or right after all the slave stammered it it was the right he scoffed the crown prince is still quite naive manman rearranged the chest pieces hearing his whisper she asked what does your highness mean he placed his hand on the chest pieces and said the group transporting goods earlier took the left road and was ambushed by mountain bandits wiped out the carriage rumbled nearing a suspended bridge thunder or drowning out the servant voice but the remaining path crosses the river that would be even more dangerous the servant reported your highness the crown prince how shall we cross the bridge Li Lim ordered his subordinates to split into three groups you all clear the way escort me and the goods across first as for Jiang Wang isn't he my bodyguard let him follow after me Manman and Li calmly observed the situation up ahead a subordinate was about to say something but the crown prince impatiently scolded him what are you still doing here do you want me to cross over there myself the subordinate had no choice but to obey clearly he went to his carriage to inform him your highness the crown prince asks your carriage to follow behind him he agreed M. manman worried hugged him tightly seeking warmth and called your highness he gently reassured her it's all right the caravan began crossing the suspended bridge one by one the subordinate surged quickly quickly the goods first then the crown prince's carriage be careful the carriage is rumbled across now the subordinates guided Liji's carriage your ass's carriage can cross now the wheels rolled forward suddenly at this moment there were loud shouts of kill sensing the impending danger manman exclaimed mountain bandits the situation is chaotic tron vong back charged forward to block the mountain bandits your highness go ahead we'll follow behind Li held her shoulder to calm her down don't be afraid i'm here she replied okay the fearless subordinates outside rushed forward brothers we swear to protect his highness or die trying they charged on Till's carriage swiftly crossing over the crown prince observed with a slight curl of his lips words of disdain escaped his mouth the crippled man also wants to rush over wait until I'm dead before speaking the subordinates outside noticed the crown prince's gaze and understood nodding their heads he's pretending to offer help his hands secretly drew his sword hurry hurry almost the, the carriage has reached the middle of the bridge hurry at this moment a sword flashed cutting the rope Tron Vong Bark commanded his subordinates to block the mountain band suddenly hearing screams he turned to look the rope is cut Tran Vong Bark helplessly watched the carriage fall your highness the crown prince the carriage fell and sank later by the riverbank in the pouring rain thunder rumbled loudly in the sky the subordinates quickly searched everywhere continuously calling out loudly your highness the crown prince your highness the crown prince meanwhile on the shore Lima and the crown prince 
Prince Li Lim stood watching indifferently Lim Tan Chai said slowly the current flows so swiftly and the crown prince's legs are crippled he basically cannot swim it's better to keep less than risk more the crown prince shrugged then there's no other way I can only wish him luck the thorn in my eye is now removed the crown prince made an excuse ordering his subordinates to help the disaster is urgent I cannot delay and stay here take the silver with you. Continue following me to the south the subordinates answered clearly in unison the crown prince's expression turned sinister as he said indifferently as for the, the crown prince he looked down from above at his subordinates below striving to find him the crown prince coldly delegated the responsibility saying leave it to trans guards it's quite far from here the carriage late tumbled with belongings scattered around leech held the unconscious man man tightly on the riverbank she had swallowed too much water the sound of coughing echoed Manman gradually regained consciousness this seems familiar I remember before she recalled the moment they fell into the water Leetik had held her protect protecting her struggling to bring her to shore he used all his strength one hand holding their belongings the other holding Manman she was touched and tried to call out your highness Leetik just regaining consciousness looked at her worriedly and replied I'm all right she saw his arm was bleeding she couldn't help but feel pain saying your arm needs medical attention for First he calmly responded I'll try to endure it his gaze fell on the shattered belongings Manman said worriedly but this is a flood area the people living here have probably all evacuated or become refugees how could there still be a clinic suddenly crying could be heard from afar she was startled and said to him your highness it seems there are people he gently replied let's go take a look it's not far two children were crying beside a man's corpse further while well, they seemed so overwhelmed with grief that they didn't know Notice the newcomer's men and sudden appearance startled the little girl who screamed who are you she showed a harmless demeanor and said hello we just arrived here we want to ask if there's a clinic nearby the girl replied this village has been submerged if you want to find a clinic you'll have to go to the town I see the two grieving children hugged each other looking at their motionless father the brave little girl made a suggestion to Manman the way to the town is quite difficult I can guide you there but I want you to help us bury our father Manman and Lee Titch looked at each other a while later a grave had taken shape the two children knelt before the grave the girl pushed herself up she took her little brother's hand and turned to Manman saying we're done now we can go the little girl suddenly remembered and introduced herself and her brother to Manman and Lee Titch oh right my name is Kim Linney this is my little brother Kim Tanium what are your names Manman cheerfully replied Dim are you this is my general Leo Go Leech frowned at the new name he was given Kim Ling innocently said oh go go I get it Manman was startled oops I've dug myself into a hole here she lowered her voice to negotiate actually you can just call me Lio Leech leaned and teased her I think sounds great after all back in your hometown everyone called you that didn't they he deliberately emphasized the words go her face flushed at a loss for words Manman decided to retaliate replying that's right go Kimmeling tilted her head a big question mark on her face watching the two of them constantly bickering go the two followed the children Manman asked so the town wasn't flooded the girl replied I heard they dug drainage canals near the town so the water flowed through the canals it didn't accumulate in the town Manman asked puzzled if that's the case then what about other places that didn't dig drainage canals the girl pursed her lips and said I don't know about that we came to Fuan from elsewhere to find relatives moreover we're not locals here so these things are just here say Manman said I see inside the town the residents were like gaunt ghosts wandering around the gatekeeper's cold voice shouted get out Manman looked around surprised at the many residents complaining so hungry the two stood before the town gate astonished is this the town gate why is it closed a few steps away a child's wailing wa 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 did to the gloomy atmosphere the mother comforted the child don't cry don't cry man were noticed and approached them asking excuse me why is the town gate closed the woman with sunken cheeks looked up at manman with a dazed expression she replied in the past there were refugees who caused disturbances in the town this angered the residents 
residence so the county magistrate won't let us enter the town man and kindly asked if you can't enter the town why are you still here the woman replied the woman holding the child in her arms said because the Gordeng and families will be distributing food outside the town Lick asked hurriedly what about the people from those three families the woman explained those three families are the great clans in this Fu County even the county magistrate has to give way to the three families they are all good people they know we were hit by the flood and have nowhere to go every day they distribute porridge to everyone outside the town the woman spoke and pointed towards the tent sits over there inquired what about the imperial court doesn't the court distribute porridge the woman immediately reacted angrily those officials before were the cruise course the Gore family is the most powerful clan in Fuan County their eldest son is indeed named Gajang Ming why is this little girl asking about this suddenly Kai Munan spoke loudly Jiang Ming is my future brother in law everyone was stunned and exclaimed in surprise Kim Linney was embarrassed she covered Tun's mouth with her hand hurriedly explaining he's just a child talking nonsense please don't pay attention to him Manman and Lick looked at each other as if they understood each other's thoughts the two of them immediately pulled the children away saying come here to talk they hid behind a deserted wall and Manman said all right there's no one here seeing the children's surprise Manman gently asked quickly tell me how you plan to enter the town Kim Linney looked hesitant then the child took out two items and said I have tokens given by the head of the girl family we plan to use them to enter their town manman understood and suggested I see then wait until tomorrow when they distribute porridge and please help us enter the town Linney replied no need to be so polite the night fell quickly the four of them tried to endure the cold manman and Leetik shared a blanket on the stone wall wall while the two children huddled under a blanket below shivering and trembling there were other people too constantly driving Tuni and away to find a spot this is my tent manman sat in Lytic's embrace unable to escape the biting cold he touched her face comforting her don't worry I'm here with you I will definitely take good care of you hearing his reassuring words she smiled happily early the next morning the town gate was finally opened their journey continued manman and Lick using Kim Ling's tokens entered the town to repay the girl's kindness they went with Linny to the Gore family in the family's main hall a pair of ornate shoes stepped in the servant following behind announced the young madam is waiting in the main hall a woman with a gentle voice responded this woman was Shui the eldest young madam of the Gao family Shuji looked at Linny and asked you a Kim Linny hearing her name the girl became more tense the maid beside Shuji introduced this is the eldest young madam of our Gao family Shuji arrogantly said I heard you have tokens bring them here for me to see child Linny timidly replied and brought out what she was holding Lex eyes narrowed sharply when he heard the arrogant tone of the eldest young madam just a little brat Shuji's outward expression didn't reveal much but inwardly she was mocking them if I destroy the tokens and the marriage letter then Gan can rightfully refuse to acknowledge this marriage Linny bring the tokens here Linny brought the tokens with both hands saying here they are Manman cautiously intervened wait Linny didn't understand her sudden action and asked twice sister before Shuji could touch them Manman quickly stepped in to stop her the tokens and marriage letter are so important how can you casually give them to someone else what if they carelessly damage them Linny fell silent a gloomy expression on her face sister is right the girl realized the gravity and reacted eldest young madam please call the old master gala can only give the marriage letter and tokens to the old master gala cannot give them to anyone else with her plan foiled Shuji's face turned pale as she threatened how dare you defy me you insolent child you refuse the wine I offer then you'll have to drink the punishing brew you ungrateful wretch she then ordered her subordinates someone sees this brat get me the marriage letter and tokens the subordinates immediately moved in responding clearly Linny angrily question them in a loud voice so you really want to break the marriage before the subordinates could do anything a tea tray was flung straight at their head a challenging male voice rang out who dares lick swiftly launched an attack everyone was caught off guard unable to react he kicked several subordinates then stood protectively in front of the two terrified huddled children the subordinates who had been struck lay scattered on the floor one of them held his head continuously crying out in pain ow 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 shuji terrified wanted to 
sneak away but trembled as she asked him who is he Manman suddenly appeared and confronted her young madam where do you think you're going after a while thanks to Lex intervention the situation was completely under control Shui sat dejectedly listening to the children speak but you must give us a sum of money as compensation for the losses Lenny turned to Manman for her opinion sister how much do you think is appropriate Manman was considering there amount when the child once again confirmed 100 tails Linny hesitated wondering isn't that too much Shuji thought happily that's a great deal indeed just a foolish brat 100 tails would be enough to get rid of her she smirked and replied that's possible but Manman suddenly interrupted her words 1000 tails the amount she proposed startled Shuji ignoring her attitude Manman reasoned madam this concerns the girl's lifelong happiness one Oh, 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 Tails is already a bargain. If you're not satisfied, we can increase it. Manman cheerfully proposed. How about 1,200 Tails? Upon hearing this, Shuji was dumbfounded. Sweat poured down her face. The two children had successfully secured the amount. Linny gratefully said, Thank you for your help just now. Otherwise, my sister and I would have been driven out with nothing but the clothes on our backs. Sister, let's split this money evenly. Manman holding the cash said, This much is enough for us. You two can have the rest. Live well with your brother. By the way, you don't seem as vicious as those people claimed they may come after you for revenge. So, for the time being, you two should come with us. Linny hurriedly replied, Thank you, sister, for your kindness. Manman said cheerfully to Letic, Now let's go to the. He looked at her warmly and responded. Responded as you wish madam the bandages on his arm were neatly rewrapped manman looked at him with concern it's all right it doesn't hurt anymore he reassured her urgent voices came from outside the crown prince is about to enter the city manman was startled to hear the servants they were arguing with each other the two witnessed the soldier chasing and warning the people speak properly no one is allowed to go out in the coming days no idle chatter understood if we catch anyone don't blame us for using force man man and let look Looked at each other in confusion. The crown prince is about to arrive. Lick's expression was tense as he pondered. According to the initial plan, the crown prince was supposed to stay here for a while, but they said no idle chatter. What does that mean? Is there something the crown prince can't know about? Why he casually tried to extract information from the doctor. Fukan County suffered a severe natural disaster. The crown prince's arrival is a good thing, but why do those officials look so fierce like they want to eat people? Manman added that's right I heard the crown prince brought a lot of supplies to provide disaster relief this time but why do those people outside not seem happy about his arrival the doctor asked you're not from around here are you man man nudged lick who didn't hide it and admitted you're right we're outsiders who came here to avoid the disaster we're not locals we came from elsewhere to escape the calamity the doctor lowered his head and replied dejectedly if the crown prince brings silver and grain and it truly reaches the hands of the disaster stream people then of course everyone would be happy but how could such a good thing happen Lick seemed to understand the implication behind those words you mean someone inside is embezzling public funds the doctor was startled and quickly denied it in fear I didn't say that don't talk nonsense from his reaction Lick understood 80% of the situation I heard the county grain I has stored a lot of grain then why hasn't the county magistrate distributed it to the disaster stricken people fearing he might implicate himself further the doctor hurriedly left leaving the two of them behind all right I finished bandaging you I have other matters to attend to at the pharmacy the doctor handed them two pouches of medicine here are your medicines all packed the doctor said to the two of them I reckon you two must be important figures traveling incognito on some mission manman began to worry could it be that we've been found out so quickly the doctor whispered to them I know I'm not mistaken such scenes often appear in plays a high ranking official to understand the situation deliberately disguises himself as a commoner and travels everywhere to investigate there doctor glanced around and said you must want to know about the county magistrates affairs let me tell you let's go somewhere else to talk it's getting dark outside and the lamps are being lit Lick's voice rose so you mean the county magistrate is actually controlled by higher ups the doctor nodded drunkenly exactly before the magistrate took office this place was ruled by gun cut oh everyone in the county office is his man so he decides everything the magistrate is just a figurehead without real power the doctor drained his cup satisfied and the magistrate is actually a good man always trying 
trying to help the poor like us last year he proposed repairing the dike and raising the river embankment but unfortunately as soon as he proposed it Gunshaw rejected it Manman thought blankly if they had maintained the dike from the start perhaps the people wouldn't be homeless wanderers now Quo sincerely said as she saw the doctor out thank you for the information please be careful the doctor bowed and left Quo, closed the door turned and asked Litic your highness what do you make of this he poured himself a cup of wine leisurely the south always floods during the rainy season so the imperial court allocates funds every year to the counties for dike maintenance yet Fukin County didn't repair the leading to this disaster he looked at her and asked can you guess where the imperial funds went she took a sip of wine and said could it be that she knew embezzled them all but she immediately realized and refuted that can't be right how could he possibly Pocket so much money by himself Jang and his brothers must have had a hand in this too he went to the window and looked outside what I find quite interesting now is he said with a hint of sarcasm the crown prince's visit to Fukin County what will he think when he sees the plight of these homeless people at the city gate carriages gradually entered the crown prince lifted their curtain seeing that the magistrate Xuan was among the local officials welcoming him the crown prince stepped down declining ceremony he suddenly stopped and asked them why are these refugees gathered here their presence could not help but arouse the crown prince's curiosity what happened should and did not anticipate this the crown prince Li Lim turned to interrogate him what happened to these people Shuan sighed heavily he respectfully reported the situation your highness these are victims of the recent flood they have lost their homes and can only gather outside the city awaiting relief the crown prince frowned in thought no wonder they look so ragged they have become beggars it seems the crown prince shouted angrily if they are victims you should have arranged for them proper shelter and provisions why abandon them outside the city like this you are an incompetent magistrate Xuan accepted the reprimand without protest your highness is correct your highness I heard you came south to provide disaster relief I dare implore your highness to quickly distribute provisions to the people Lim's expression was grim his eyes flashing with killing intent how dare this blind fool urge me to work at this late hour the crown prince did not hesitate to use it seems the magistrate has ulterior motives very well since you insist I work I have a question for you the court allocates funds to Fukin County every year for flood prevention why was it not done this time did someone pocket the money for themselves Shan's face paled at the sharp accusation this time there would be severe consequences consequences at the tavern as the prince said Li looked out the window listening to Manman speak this time the crown prince will surely clean house eliminating the corrupt officials here then Xuan can finally voice his long-held grievances he sneered denying it as usual outside Xuan was arrested and dragged away confirming lie deduction he is merely a scapegoat helping the crown prince claim credit she felt worried about Shan's fate Manman said indignantly if that's true, shouldn't we try to help him? He slammed the door shut refusing. Manman was slightly disappointed. I don't want an innocent person to die wrongfully. She tried to persuade Lord if we don't help the crown prince will sure early behead to claim credit for eliminating corruption. He coldly replied whether others live or die is none of my concern. I only want to do my job well. She disagreed with his view. But if we let this happen an upright official will be lost weight. My lord honest officials are becoming rarer while corrupt corrupt ones increase the entire court will eventually be ruined his tone grew solemn so what whether corrupt or upright has nothing to do with me she grabbed his hand using every persuasion to change his mind but if he truly didn't care she gently tugged his sleeve and questioned then why did you actively investigate the internal affairs of Fukin County he remained silent at her action manman paused then he confided years ago my father was framed and suffered in Fang village that's why, I'd never mind he risked his life to get me out so I could return to the capital for help she looked at him in surprise his voice remained steady as he continued I brought my close guards and barely escaped with our lives it was extremely difficult to reach the capital I went before the palace gates begging the emperor to send troops to rescue my father but all I received were slanderous accusations from the officials those beasts in human skin they framed my beloved father with false charges before the emperor he counted bitterly they accused my father of treason claiming he colluded with others conspiring from within and without deliberately leading 100 
000 troops into an ambush causing the entire army to be slaughtered he raised his head voice filled with anguish we had beheaded enemy soldiers spilling their hot blood not hesitating to sacrifice our lives to defend the country but when we needed help the most no one was willing to protect us instead they stabbed us in the back with a fatal blow a country like this why should I defend the corrupt officials in power the death of honest officials has nothing to do with me man man's hand dropped limply Liz said solemnly I must rest now you should retire early too she watched him slowly undress feeling somewhat empathetic towards the pain he had endured having read the novel it mentioned Lij but only portrayed him as a cunning person portrayed as a ruthless and petty murderer who kills without lifting a finger little did she know he had gone through so much in bed she hugged him as if making a silent promise don't worry even if you've lost faith in this world I'll stay by your side. I'll make you gradually believe that there is still warmth in this world. He lay in her embrace hearing every word in her heart. The next morning little Linger happily ate steamed buns and the four of them seemed like a small family. Linger exclaimed contentedly the steamed buns at this in are so delicious man man agreed yes I want more. Suddenly the door burst open soldiers rushed in abruptly saying you are Kimalina Kim Sunium and the Lee couple right langrily snapped who is this Lee couple you speak of you must have the wrong people the soldier rudely curse don't play dumb with me I know you're the Lee couple with a smug look he mocked what a nice name your parents gave you now you don't even dare admit it you coward he was already convinced in his heart that these four had offended the high official he would find some excuse to imprison these lowly people making their lives worse than death then later he would find another excuse to execute them so they suffered terribly before dying that was his plan Lirid the wicked thoughts and scoffed I remember you now the man became enraged meanwhile Manman hurried to protect the two children shielding them from the man's threats the man charged forward yelling who do you think you are you how dare you talk back to me I'll beat you to death Liz swiftly approached the man then with one hand he grabbed the man's neck and lifted him into the air stance he calmly asked who's lousy are you the other soldiers were aghast eyes wide open quick release the captain the captain was running out of air his face turned blue and he weakly said let me go the soldiers quickly drew their swords from their sheaths Lee's extraordinary martial skills allowed him to easily evade the slashing blade blades he grabbed the captain's arm and forced him to stab himself with his own sword the captain screamed in agony ah yet he still stubbornly shouted you arrogant brat we'll kill you the sounds of fists and kicks filled the air man man and the children hid in a corner linger asked auntie should we help Manman Lytton, incensed stick and cheerfully said no need we'll just watch from here getting involved would only complicate things he can handle it alone lit taught those thugs a lesson by the time the incense stick burned out he was done it was over two terrified soldiers scrambled and ran away but not before threatening you'll pay for this just you wait inside the captain lay unconscious on the ground his sword beside him did you knock him out Le Manman joyfully ran over holding a wine jar and called out the two children couldn't hide their admiration for him he suddenly the wine poured down onto the captain's face he woke up utterly bewildered when he saw the two of them lit threatened him now you should tell me who's lousy are you in the why the county magistrate and Prince Lalin were conversing they were startled to see two soldiers hurriedly approach the magistrate magistrate there's been an incident the two battered soldiers limped in to pay respects your highness Prince Lalin closed his fan and asked no need for formalities what happened the pale-faced soldiers approached approached the magistrate and said it was Lee those two rascals magistrate the magistrate respectfully explained your highness they bandits thieves have been plaguing the city recently I had specially dispatched these men to catch them but judging by their current state those bandits must be formidable they failed to apprehend them Leland was astonished bandits in the city the magistrate replied yes your highness we've been preoccupied with the natural disasters lately so I couldn't patrol the city myself recently I thought the county captain could handle things but clearly I was mistaken Lalan frowned that incompetent fool what did you expect he could accomplish Lalan took out his jade token and confidently roared take this token to the tiger lair 
Palace mobilize a small troop to catch those bandits. He can't handle it. The county magistrate's face lit up with delight. You take charge. Yes, your highness holding the token. The magistrate, his troops out. Make way, make way ahead. Clear the path. The clopping of hooves echoed from the Yemen accompanied by the crack of whips and whinny of horses. The atmosphere grew more tense than ever. The whole neighborhood was in an uproar. Wonka lay unconscious on the ground. Leah and the manman calmly sat eating buns and drinking tea. The two children beside them looked puzzled and concerned is he still alive manman replied i don't know the children worriedly said to manman anti man man those officials and soldiers they don't look like they'll let us off easy they'll definitely not let us go maybe we should leave first manman smiled slightly don't be afraid nothing will happen but linger looked around worriedly sighed and replied all right i'll listen to you suddenly linger looked outside in terror she quickly called out anti man man at this moment moment the county magistrate and his officials arrived he strode in arrogantly accidentally stepping on a man lying on the ground heavens captain wang how did you end up so badly injured the magistrate glared at leah and said so you're the one who dared to attack my officers Le the rascal but Le wasn't the least bit afraid he calmly held his teacup and asked back aren't you the one sheltering criminals here county magistrate county magistrate the county magistrate hurried Hurriedly refuted don't talk nonsense don't think you can do as you please just because you're skilled in martial arts today I will definitely arrest you and bring you to justice then I'll hang your corpse in the market as a warning to others lip paid no heed to his words he calmly sipped his tea and challenged him then let's see who ends up hanging in the market for all to see the county magistrate enraged cursed your courting death you refuse to repent if that's how it is I won't waste any more words on you general bin the county magistrate turned to the general you'll have to handle this general bian it's your turn as general bian stepped forward he suddenly turned pale then he rushed over kneeled before leah and cried while hugging his legs your highness the prince regent your highness i've searched high and low for you the county magistrate was dumbfounded the prince regent langrily kicked the general away don't touch me the general wailed your highness i finally found you the county magistrate was stunned into silence the prince regent lish shoved the general away in Discuss don't touch your sovereign the general cried cried out your highness forgive me forgive me pardon my disrespect I was just overjoyed to see you I got too excited when I saw your highness here he suddenly paused then exclaimed in shock wait you're not the prince regent your highness legs your highness legs how can they move now Lick questioned him sternly why wouldn't your sovereign's legs be able to move his words left the general flustered no no that's not it I was just surprised that your highness's leg injury had healed so suddenly I was overjoyed that's all this is great news if the crown prince knew he'd be ecstatic hearing this Lou laughed indeed he'd probably go mad with joy sensing the situation wasn't good the county magistrate thought so he's the prince regent I can't arrest him with my men now I should slip away while he's distracted heard his thoughts and smiled faintly the county magistrate grew nervous turned towards the door to escape and thought with relief you no one noticed but before he could take a step lick called out county magistrate you were about to leave court red-handed the magistrate panicked no no i wasn't leaving your highness county magistrate were you preparing to go she had caught him in the terrified the county magistrate turned and stammered no you're Highness I wasn't going anywhere I was just looking for a better spot to kneel and pay respects to your highness Li said sternly have you found one then the magistrate immediately knelt yes I have I wish your highness the prince regent eternal life and prosperity long live your highness ten oh 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 years a million million years Li glanced at the groveling man and asked was this scoundrel sent by you to capture me Li asked him the man immediately protested your highness there's been a misunderstanding i only heard there were thieves hiding in there city so i sent men to catch them not to capture your highness hearing this lick kicked him squarely so you disobeyed orders and went around arresting random people that's insubordination the man hurriedly explained no no your highness I didn't I didn't I didn't it sits because he kept stuttering and wouldn't confess immediately threatened there County Magistrate I'll give you one last chance if you don't tell the whole truth I will hold you accountable for all crimes by then not only will you die but your family will be exiled to the borders think carefully before you 
answer terrified the man confessed everything it was County Magistrate Cow who sent me because you offended Elder. Cow who is County Magistrate Cow's elder brother so the County Magistrate wanted to avenge him exposed Cow angrily warned him shut your mouth another word and you'll see how I deal with you lay gave him a sharp look you talk big County Magistrate Cow how do you plan to deal with him tell me in detail Cow immediately knelt denying it your highness please don't listen to his nonsense he's talking rubbish he's only saying that because he has a grudge against me the county magistrate could no longer bear it he shouted I'm not talking nonsense your highness if you don't believe me you can summon all the constables from the county office and interrogate them they can testify for me seeing the situation was unfavorable cow thought the crown prince is still here the prince cannot overstep and punish me I'll admit my crime for now he hurriedly cow toad confessing his crime it was my mistake your highness I shouldn't have abused my authority for personal vendettas please your highness consider this it's my first offense pardon me this time Le waved his hand coldly signaling to take cow away and strip him of his position interrogate this county magistrate and all the constables he brought throw them all in jail to await my judgment cow couldn't believe believe it he screamed your highness you can't do this you have no authority to judge officials I won't submit to this injustice I'll go report you to the crown prince before he could finish he was gagged lit turned to ask by Anzing where is the crown prince now he replied preparing to judge loudly looked at him calmly if that's the case then let's go watch the two rode off on one horse at the brightly lit ancestral hall the crown prince was judging ladam the glistening mirrors hung high you still refuse to admit embezzling public funds despite being tortured and covered in wounds Lee madamantly denied the charges I am innocent your highness I have committed no crime the crown prince angrily slapped slammed the table ordering still arguing are you beat him harder for me let's see how tough his bones really are immediately Lim was whipped fiercely by the guards he insisted officials cover for each other blind to right and wrong you're ruining the empire with your corruption the great Joe is doomed the rivers and mountains the great Joe is doomed the people are doomed all is doomed the crown prince Leland was enraged shouting profanities who gave you permission to utter such treasonous and filial words shut your mouth before I shut it for you Lamb's eyes burned with determination as he yelled the great Joe is doomed furious the crown prince ordered him silence drawing his sword as he spoke suddenly an announcement came from outside the prince has arrived Lulin was taken prince Leah and Binzing stroh in confidently Leland face darkened as he addressed Leo not dead yet Lee glanced at him retorting hoping I was dead your highness the crown prince forced a laugh haha ha, of course not why would I want you dead prince I'm glad you made it back safely Leah replied flatly is that so suddenly Bian Zing exclaimed in shock look there isn't that the crimson army sword the one his majesty bestowed upon the prince why is it in your highness's hands the crown prince looked at the sword in panic Bian Ziming spoke slowly enunciating each word surely your highness did not covet this sword and take it for yourself that would be most improper this is a gift from the emperor even the crown prince cannot take it at will the crown prince admitted his mistake saying I thought something had happened to you seeing this sword reminded me of you Lick calmly replied your highness did nothing wrong to apologize for the crown prince gritted his teeth saying I thank you for not letting him finish L responded in any case I did not intend to forgive you the crown prince grew angry L extended his hands saying now your highness can return the crimson army sword to its rightful owner the crown prince had no choice but to hand it over Bian Ziming immediately stepped forward taking the sword give it to me she took the sword wiping it with her hands as if a afraid the prince had dirtied it she blew on it removing any trace of the crown prince's touch the crown prince's face darkened as he watched then Bian Ziming happily handed it to Li saying I've cleaned it for you your highness he gently replied at this point the two of them pretended not to know Lam asking who this person was the crown prince was furious but could only force a smile he is the corrupt official Lam he is accused of embezzling public funds we are interrogating him this has nothing to do with the prince I hope the prince will not intervene Lee calmly replied oh in that case your highness please proceed Leah and Binzing sat there watching the crown prince angrily turned and left in a huff suddenly the crown prince's expression changed he paused then turned back to glance at Lee smirked thinking he's finally reacting then he spoke
spoke up asking the crown prince why are you looking at me like that your highness the crown prince asked in surprise your legs are healed Lee replied with a hint indeed thanks to your highness's blessing when I fell into the river not only did I not drown but facing the threshold of life and death my survival instinct awakened allowing my legs to regain their senses if not for your highness choosing to cross that suspension bridge my legs would not have healed Lee glanced at the crown prince and said sincerely I must thank your highness from the bottom of my heart the crown prince could only respond it seems the prince's luck is quite good after speaking the crown prince turned and sat back down sighing he continued interrogating Ladam he warned I'll give you one last chance if you do not confess truthfully I will have no choice but to imprison you and interrogate you more severely Liam gritted his teeth and insisted I your subject am completely innocent the crown prince shouted angrily if so why don't you imprison Ladam for now Liz spoke up slowly wait a moment if your highness has not uncovered any clues let me handle this matter the crown prince said with some concern prince this has nothing to do with you do not meddle in this carelessly picked up the sword and said really nothing to do with me lay glanced at the crown prince and said if it has nothing to do with me then why did your highness earlier want to use my honkwan sword to execute someone the crown prince frowned angrily and said I was just borrowing it borrowing this sword was bestowed upon me by his majesty representing his majesty's trust in me your highness took it without asking intending to behead the court official if his majesty investigates this matter later who will be held responsible your highness Le said smugly and provocatively seeing this the crown prince angrily replied we act for the court's sake why must we differentiate so strictly Le directly continued your highness said it has nothing to do with me then said no need to differ differentiate contradicting yourself completely Bian Zing also joined in whispering to literally truly words contradict each other I've heard those with thick faces usually have good tempers because it's hard for them to lose face Lin nodded slightly since you have such a thick face it must be hard to lose it but now it seems the saying has some truth to it look your highness's face is also quite thick yet you lose face so quickly Li calmly agreed indeed quite thick the crown prince glared at them angrily provoked to fury he scolded Bian Zing how dare you have the audacity to speak so arrogantly before me Bian Zing feigned surprise why do you look so grieved upon hearing the truth pardon me I was just making a casual remark surely your highness won't take offense from a little woman like myself the crown prince completely enraged shouted in order this is the court all you idlers get out of my sight the soldiers were about to take action against her when Lee directly stood in front to protect her he said seriously she is my lawful wedded wife not some idler the crown prince and Lee immediately glared at each other hostile are you openly defying me Lee did not hold back in replying so what if I am by Ian Siming said pitifully from the side it's all my fault I'm the one to blame please don't argue because of me the crown prince infuriated by her words said helplessly you insist on meddling in this matter don't you Lily calmly replied how is this meddling I'm helping your highness shoulder the responsibility after all your highness has many other matters to attend to when would I have time to deal with such trivial cases the crown prince said hearing this the crown prince immediately threw the task to Lily since you put it that way I'll give you two days if within two days you can't find out where the dirty money went you must immediately pack your bags and return to the capital after saying this the crown prince Prince felt pleased if that good for nothing Lee insists on handling this trivial matter then I'll conveniently pass this headache to him if he can't uncover the truth by then then let's see what he'll do Lee showed no concern calmly accepting the challenge if I can resolve this case within two days I hope your highness will grant me a small request the crown prince scoffed derisively agreed afterwards Lee called for a physician to treat Lanbian Ziming gently said his injuries are thanks to you then the two of them left together as they walked Bian Zing curiously asked my lord why did you suddenly change your mind and help Lan who said I was helping him hearing this she was surprised if you're not trying to help him why did you accept this case Li gently replied because I want to obtain something from the crown prince she persisted and asking what is it that's worth all this trouble for you my lord he said mysteriously it's a secret you'll find out in due time hearing this Bian Zing felt a little annoyed so what does my lord plan to do now Li smiled faintly and said search the residence Li then directly ordered Tron Vong to search Cao Mansion Tran Vong coldly said you have some nerve to search the Cao family's mansion with over 200 
Oh, 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 tales of their money. The scene at Cow Mansion was gloomy. The remaining image showed Cow County Magistrate and his family kneeling and admitting guilt. Your Highness, please have some tea. Lee looked at Lamin Kai and thought silently, This is the man who can see the future. So Lamin Kai, he calmly picked up the teacup and said, Leisurely, Your Highness, I found the missing money and the real embezzler of public funds. Your Highness should keep your promise, shouldn't you? The Crown Prince frowned reluently, asking, What is it that you desire so much? that you've gone through all this trouble Lee sipped his tea glancing at Lamy the crown prince angrily spoke up Chiang don't tell me you've taken a fancy to my Lamongvn he smiled triumphantly what if I have Chiang the crown prince glared at Lam Tan Chai you're not seriously eyeing her are you he smiled smugly and what if I am the crown prince looked at her and said king fancies you consider yourself fortunate are you willing to go with him she immediately spoke up loudly this servant is unwilling since marrying your highness this servant has belonged to your highness in this life this servant will only follow your highness after saying this she knelt down pleading this servant begs Chiang to have mercy please spare this servant the crown prince then spoke up surely you've heard her clearly Kai Wang it's not that I don't want to grant your wish but Lamongvin is truly unwilling to go with you as the saying goes an unrip melon is not sweet I asked Kai Wang not to trouble her first the lick calmly drank his tea and said I don't care whether the unripe melon is sweet or not I simply enjoy picking melons as long as I can pick one I'm satisfied the crown prince angrily replied Chiang are you insisting on taking her just for your amusement Li put down his teacup and said I was merely jesting with your highness your highness need not take it seriously in fact I only wish to ask your highness for a servant to help me with the task the crown prince asked with some surprise is that true Li firm said of course at this the, the crown prince's expression darkened as if contemplating something he called Lamongvin over and whispered something to her after that they left together everyone went outside the crown prince summoned the servants to kneel before them allowing Li to choose one a servant knelt among the crowd Li was slightly flustered thinking to himself Kai Wang probably doesn't know that I was the one who cut the ropes on the bridge that day no one noticed me at the time Kai Wang definitely couldn't have known I don't need to worry I can't let myself panic ordinary people like me Kai Wang would certainly not take notice of he wouldn't choose any of us at this Li smiled faintly found him he then directly took that servant away seeing this the crown prince bitterly warned he must not be allowed to live if this reaches the emperor's ears Lini hurriedly spoke up Tong Jong has been taken away by Kai Wang those around Kai Wang are all his loyal men it would be very difficult for us to take action unless we can plant one of our own inside Chiang's residence he hesitated saying your highness I have a plan in mind but I'm not sure if I should say it the crown prince urgently replied speak Lemon Kai answered it is said that Kai Wang greatly favors beautiful women perhaps we could the scene shifted to Manman she was currently in the kitchen eagerly rolling up her sleeves to prepare the fish Manman said cheerfully finally an opportunity to make myself a light meal this time I'll show Kai Wang my excellent culinary skills she then hugged the fish and said affectionate Ely fish don't blame me for being so cruel blame yourself for being so plump and delicious making my mouth water at the mere sight of you suddenly there were footsteps Manman asked in surprise who's there it was none other than Lan Chai Lan Chai entered and gently said beautiful lady I didn't expect to find you here I seem to have lost my way could you please guide me back Manman looked at him sensing something amiss she thought lost his way although we haven't been here long this residence is so small how could he possibly get lost it seems he's up to no good again Lamy was startled to see the fish struggling and shouted who's killing this fish Manman looked looked flustered and explained I can accompany you back but I've promised Kai Wang to bring him a fish soup later Manman then cheerfully said why don't you help me gut the fish I asked in disbelief what Manman enthusiastically handed me the fish and said come on the sooner we're done the sooner I can take you back I had no choice but to take the knife reluctantly I raised the knife with great difficulty then I heard a crunching sound behind me I turned and saw man man happily munching on some melon seeds Lamton Kai glanced at her she mustered her courage squeezed her eyes shut thinking just do it and brought the knife down with a thud the knife flew out of her hand blood splattering everywhere Lamon Kai cried out in pain Manman rushed over in alarm asking what happened I trembled and said I cut my hand but Manman paid no heed she hurried over worried if the fish was alright she anxiously asked did did your blood get on the fish neither I nor the prince one 
want to eat fish tainted with human blood seeing this I stood frozen gritting my teeth and enduring as I replied no blood got on it Manman calmly continued that's good then that's good then you continue Lamoni said weakly but my hand is injured so for now I can't do it why don't you take me back first later I'll send a maid to help you Manman casually said it's just a small cut not like your whole finger was chopped off no need to make such a fuss hear this I was furious but still had to grit my teeth and in due man man took the knife again determined to do it herself angrily saying forget it I don't trust you I'll draw you a map you go back first and I'll finish preparing the fish hearing this Lani I became agitated saying wait I haven't achieved my goal yet how can I leave she forced a smile took the knife and said let me do it man man observed from the side thinking she's quite patient it seems she wants me to go over the most likely she intends to to do something I might as well play along with her a bit more later Lini sighed and said I'm done gutting it Manman casually replied done gutting the fish then start a file and Kai her face black with anger thought for the prince island she sighed and obediently went to start the fire Manman then ordered again next go fetch some water after that she had to boil the water and then put the fish into cook finally the fish dish was completed seeing the delicious looking fish dish manman exclaimed happily it smells so good thank you for helping me cook the fish you're such a nice person seeing everything was done Lini spoke up joyfully now can you come back with me manman looked disappointed and said that's not possible I have to take the fish back first you come with me wait a bit the prince will send someone to take you back seeing this Lami could no longer hold back she was furious and shouted w man man you tricked me the prince ordered me to treat you well I never expected you to go this far immediately the soldiers came in Lambie arrogantly ordered seize her for me Manman remained calm sitting there and thinking I wonder why she suddenly came here seems she was waiting for me Manman quietly picked up the fire poker Laman Kai arrogantly ordered the soldiers what are you doing go seize her they obeyed and charged forward at this moment Manman took action with great skill she only used the fire poker but knocked them all down to the ground Lini was astonished Manman said smugly what a pity they could couldn't capture me this enraged Lini to death man man innocently asked but why did you tell them to capture me lunch I stammered an explanation I I thought you were bored sitting here weren't you so I wanted them to capture you and beat you up hearing this man man looked remorseful and said is that so then let me tell you the prince told you to treat me well I didn't expect I went too far lamp Peony forced a smile and replied you're right going too far is good that's why I treated you well man man world the fire poker and calmly said oh I see then you should have said so earlier from your behavior just now I thought you wanted to capture and tie me up it was my misunderstanding I apologize there others turned grim faced but didn't dare a few time Manman continued since that's the case you all get up they stood up wobbling in pain and groaning Manman kindly said with a smile since you're here you might as well cook some more dishes for a late night meal for the prince if the prince asks tell him the Lemung Institute asked you to do it see I'm treating you well aren't I at this point she even wanted to help them gain favor with Prince Lamy looked annoyed but still had to respond politely then I must sincerely thank you Manman pretended to be tired and replied what kind of relationship do we have no need to thank me if you really want to thank me then help me massage my shoulders and legs I've been working all night and I'm dead tired Lini said you really have been working all night hearing those words made her furious after saying that Manman turned and glared at her threateningly saying why are you still standing there or do you want me to teach you how to massage shoulders and legs properly I don't mind demonstrating it for you I'm just afraid you can't handle my strength what if I accidentally break your bones hearing this lemon was terrified and immediately went over saying no need no need I know how to do this trivial task manman looked at her with concern and said your left hand is injured don't use your left hand to massage me seeing this she thought to herself this beast still has some humanity left perhaps I can protect tend to be in pain to get out of this manman cray continued what if you bleed on my clothes won't that make my clothes dirty she had no choice but to obey and massage man man right there right there seeing the others just standing the watching manman yelled at them why are you all just standing the like idiots go do your work the servants quickly responded yes man man while being massaged she arrogantly instructed don't bother washing the vegetables it's a waste of water and time just put them in the pot add some 
some salt and cook them a little saltiness won't hurt the prince likes bold spicy dishes so add plenty of chili peppers add some more not satisfied with her cruelty she further instructed ah whatever just throw in all eight of those chili peppers at this point lemon kai sprinkled something into man man's dish seeing this man man wondered is that vinegar or soy sauce no need to worry about it just put it all in then a dark and ominous dish was created looking at it man man nodded in satisfaction then she smiled cheerfully and said to Lini you try a bite see if it's delicious she was shocked and panicked saying what man man gave her a cold stern look immediately she was so scared that she took a piece from that dish and stammered I'll eat it I'll eat it no problem lamb tanny I closed her eyes and endured saying if you want me to eat it then I'll eat it she directly put a piece into her mouth as she bit into it she felt something was wrong she was shocked opened her eyes and coughed man man sitting beside her looked puzzled Lamy looked at what she had just put in her mouth and bit into it doubting why does this look like a rag she picked it up and examined its shape and color closely it was indeed an exact match she couldn't hold it in and immediately vomited it out the others worriedly called for the palace doctor but suddenly man man laughed loudly and said why is the palace doctor suddenly vomiting could this be the legendary morning sickness you all quickly go report to the prince the palace doctor has joyous news he's about to become a father the others were terrified and hesitated saying this matter manman stared at them and ordered go quickly they fearfully replied yes but were suddenly called back they were a bit scared manman calmly said never mind never mind also take these sour vegetable and braised chicken dishes tell the prince and then stay with the prince they relayed all her instructions to him pointing to the sour cabbage they explained infuriating Liam what did you say you said the servant said she called you both sour and incompetent and overly domineering enraged he looked at the dish and questioned suspiciously where's the brad chicken the servants fearfully hesitated and say the braised chicken refers to you being both debauched and lazy as well as vulgar Liam was furious he directly flipped over the dish of food he venomous said to Hanenren I only wanted to ruin your purity so you'd have to listen to me now it seems I can't avoid possessing you after saying that still fuming he panted and asked where's the palace doctor why didn't she return with you all the servants replied just now the palace doctor vomited one said she has morning sick sickness it was raining and the roads were slippery so we were afraid something might happen to her on the way so we sent her back the your highness Liam was suspicious if she's pregnant how could she not know the servants knelt there silent Liam frowned furious night fell in the palace chambers mischievous manman sat on Liam's lap caressing his face as she recounted the story this time after listening Liam indulged her saying for her to provoke the prince like that isn't she afraid the prince will kill her manman looked at him of course not since the king is still around the king is so powerful he will definitely protect your servant isn't that right Liam pretended to be serious saying but what if I the king say no manman moved closer pulled Liam gently and said then your servant can only make the king say yes their lips quickly met in a passionate kiss Liam carried her up moving towards the bed he laid her on the bed and said Helly then tonight you'll have to work hard their lips parted and locked together again a sweet and tangled scene unfolded behind the curtain the sound of panting rang out continuously Liam and Manman held hands as he said I just sent Tong Jong away the palace doctor has found you the prince must be impatient after saying that Liam kissed Man Man's forehead Man Man then asked did you find out anything from Tang Jong Liam said slowly this person is very stubborn even facing death he wouldn't say anything Man Man looked at him puzzled and asked the king your servant is still curious clearly you don't have any clues how can you be so sure that Tong Jong is the real culprit who cut the rope Liam winked confidently and said secretively then he pulled Man Man close and continued let's see how the prince and the palace doctor can bring evidence to us manman curiously said then what should your servant do let's go with the flow and see what they want to do then the tired limb i said why did you drag me to the kitchen i don't want to eat i don't want breakfast manman asked excitedly why don't you want breakfast limb i said irritably what if i don't want breakfast it's not bothering you is it manman looked worried and said no of course it's affecting my work if you don't eat who will cook for us hearing this limoni was speechless and said helplessly there are chefs 
chefs in the kitchen you don't have to ask me to do it manman said matter of factly but here only you eat soft food isn't that right right oh i see you just want to eat for free don't you manman counterattacked directly lian kai was stunned and replied but last night you were the one who persuaded me to stay here you didn't let me leave man man looked disappointedly and said pitifully how could you say that i asked you to stay here to take care of me you can't take my concern for granted can you lie on felt like man man's words pierced him manman sighed sadly and said well if you really don't agree it's fine do you need me to send someone to see you off lim i thought irritably originally according to the plan i was supposed to deceive hua man man went over to the crown prince's side but the plan failed if i leave like this the crown prince will definitely blame and punish me i have to grin and bear it i should stay here first and see if i can get close to tang jong i'll redeem my crime that way she said bit Tilly I'll go cook seeing this manman was satisfied she took a bowl full of rice and thought if I cook porridge this amount of rice should be enough manman stood by the side yawning tiredly bored she turned and left saying I'll go see what the prince is doing I'll be back in half an hour seeing this smiled wickedly half an hour later half an hour passed manman returned happily judging by the time she should have finished making breakfast by now let me go see how she did it suddenly manman bumped into someone ah a man's voice rang out during hearing this voice manman looked up and asked who's the stranger it was the crown prince lim at this moment he held a branch of flowers putting on a carefree and unrestrained demeanor elegant and charming he held a fan waving it as he gave her a flirtatious look manman looked at the crown prince in surprise and doubt manman looked around in surprise there was no one around she made an excuse to leave saying this servant greets your highness the crown prince your highness the crown prince this servant has some matters to attend to please excuse me lim stopped her saying with interest miss why are you in such a hurry to leave you're not a tiger after all i won't eat you he said getting close and tempting her moreover a beauty like you miss why i couldn't bear to eat you manman was horrified she thought helplessly this pig head must be trying to lure me then I'll fight fire with fire manman said shyly what is your highness the crown prince doing in broad daylight if someone else sees this they'll definitely miss and understand seeing this limb secretly felt pleased she took the bait suddenly the atmosphere between them changed Lim gently said don't be afraid there's something I'm not clear about and want to ask you she replied what does your highness the crown prince want to ask man man observed the distance between them at this moment she thought at this distance I just need to lift my leg and I can hit his with my knee that would definitely cut off his family line Lim asked slowly last night you sent two dishes what did you mean by that at this manman stopped her thoughts she shook her head well no matter what he is the crown prince if I really crippled him it would implicate the Kaio kingdom which wouldn't be good what a pity at this moment man man was still lost in her thoughts she mumbled vaguely good seeing this limb called out miss her only then did she come to her senses her limb repeated i want to ask you what the sour fish and braised chicken meant man man calmly replied those two dishes they were actually prepared by the limang palace for you how did you find the taste your highness limb didn't believe her he leaned in close with a probing look and insisted but why did i hear that you sent them for me man man thought disdainfully how cliche then she turned away with a wrong expression saying how could they do this I clearly instructed them to say those two dishes were prepared by the Limang Palace for the Crown Prince Manman said with tears in her eyes now that your highness knows the truth the Limang Palace definitely won't be happy seeing this limb felt a bit awkward he was stunned not knowing what to say then he hurriedly consoled her don't worry with me here I won't let the Limang Palace harm you Manman asked in surprise really he quickly replied of course it's true Manman said emotionally your highness the crown prince is so good to me I really admire the Lim Young Palace to be married to a gentleman who cares like your highness the crown prince manman continued with flattering words if I were the Limang Palace I would stay by your side every minute I definitely wouldn't run off to make breakfast for another man hearing this Lim angrily demanded who did the Limang Palace make breakfast for seeing he took the bait manman thought smugly I've led him to the kitchen she hesitated this happened in the kitchen Lian Kai scolded angrily 
literally you little beast you know you're tormenting me don't you eat eat until you die immediately her vicious expression was revealed she looked looked around and a new thought occurred to her there's no one around now so she spat into the food suddenly there was a loud bang at the door mangrily kicked open the door and entered manman followed behind adding fuel to the fire your highness the crown prince the limang palace didn't intentionally make breakfast for the kai wong do you believe my explanation or not lim thani was stunned to see this Lim angrily demanded so it's true the Limang Palace was making breakfast for the Kai Wang Manman said to the Crown Prince with a wrong tone a year Lim I'm sorry I Lim hurriedly explained it's not what you think I was forced to do it I had no choice seeing this Manman added that's right that's right I forced Lim to do it Lim didn't come here specially this morning there's nothing between her and the Quang then suddenly Manman became agitated and said you must believe Lim absolutely could not do anything to wrong you Lim and she weakly explained your highness the crown prince i really didn't man man looked at the pot of porridge and thought logically speaking lian she definitely wouldn't obediently cook porridge who knows if she added something to it manman quickly scooped some porridge for the crown prince your highness the crown prince came so early you must not have had breakfast yet why don't you have a little now to line your stomach seeing this lime i panicked but couldn't stop her manman cheerfully handed the bowl of porridge to lim your highness the crown prince have some porridge lim i hurriedly tried to stop her your highness the crown prince don't drink it she bumped into manman causing the bowl of porridge to spill onto the ground startling them all looking at the spilled porridge manman frowned thinking this porridge was indeed problematic then she said with concern i know this porridge was specially made for the kai wong by so it contains true feelings for the kai wong but now the crown prince is hungry even if it's just a bite how could bear to not let him eat then she turned to the crown prince and said lim you you really went too far i truly feel unworthy to take your place lim frowned and said it's just a bowl of porridge yet the limang palace won't even allow it forget it she hurriedly said let me explain this matter to you but he didn't care waving his sleeve as he left saying he had matters to attend to your highness the crown prince suddenly manman called out agitated lim turned back to look at her manman quickly scooped another bowl of porridge saying your highness the crown prince you should at least have some before leaving otherwise I'll feel terrible um gently agree then suddenly manman added wait your highness I've heard that before the crown prince has a meal someone always tastes their food for poison first only then can we ensure the food is safe no poison manman said with a smile although this porridge was personally cooked by Lim herself someone should still taste it for poison first to ensure safety after all you hold the noble status of the crown prince your safety is more important than anything else manman turned a glance at Lim Ten Chai perhaps perhaps Lim G should taste it first she said in surprise no I don't want to manman sighed sadly I can't believe even to help the crown prince taste the food is unwilling she was enraged by the provocation but she could only grit her teeth and endure cursing inwardly this little beast is definitely trying to drive a wedge between us if this continues the crown prince might actually believe her words but I can't directly say anything since I've already spat in her food I have to accept it she said loudly i leaked it and she immediately at the entire bowl of porridge her cheerful laughter echoed through the room ha ha that's how it happened how amusing manman happily recounted the story to legit manman curiously asked but what exactly did lim i put in the porridge why did she resist so much leet looked at her and explained the guard said she spat some saliva hearing this manman cried out in shock what suddenly lit hugged her waist looking a bit pensive as he said but you said just now the crown prince wanted to lead you on leet hugged her tightly and questioned tell this king how did the crown prince lead you on speak leet moved man man's hand to caress his chest asking was it like this man man shy replied no no not like that then he leaned in and kissed her cheek lightly was it like this no not like that either man man shy said at this lit smiled in amusement then he directly pulled man man down then how about this man man blush Shilly your highness legit pulled her close and kissed her passionately and so a romantic scene unfolded muffled breaths mingled with moans manman cried out your highness slow down long after manman groaned in discomfort leet noticed and asked concernedly is your back aching too much manman hugged the blanket and complained you said you wanted to tease me but ended up making me making me leet breast making you what manman was both 
Angry and embarrassed she turned away in a huff blaming him it's all your fault lead admitted defeat all right all right it's my fault it's all this kink fault lead gently massaged her saying tenderly let me help you man when tried to endure it hurts too much lead moved closer and coaxed is your waist feeling better now my lady man man turned her head noticing their intimate proximity she felt a bit shy she then quickly changed the subject yes yes your highness what have you arranged regarding the wit length of county lead replied accordingly this this afternoon I've issued him 500,000 tails for him to use in building canals and dikes Manman exclaimed excitedly that's wonderful Quain will be saved as lit massaged her he reminded don't move so much she thought irritably is it still not over yet suddenly he reached his hand in again Manman shyly protested your highness you mustn't just then a commotion sounded from outside the crown prince the crown prince Dran Von Bach tried to stop him saying your highness the king is still handling state affairs you cannot enter hearing this lit hurriedly covered manman with the blanket and said said crown prince crown prince lim forced his way in the two men glared at each other coldly lim angrily questioned have you forgotten your place you were merely sent by the emperor to protect her safety what right do you have to make decisions behind her back let's face dark and as he replied those five hundred Oh, 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 towels were issued by the court to who few can for building canals and dikes I'm simply using it again for the people of what's the problem Lim looked extremely displeased as he said oh that sounds nice people like you who kill as easily as cutting grass how could you possibly care about the people's lives you just want to take advantage of this just to gain a good reputation buying fame and seeking false praise hiding under the blanket manman see eat silently cursing this dog how dare he insult your highness like that suddenly lit pushed her down and whispered it's all right i can handle this leaving her slightly puzzled then lit calmly said so what if i'm buying fame and seeking profit what can you do about it if you have the ability then go and take back those 500 oh 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 tails right now hearing this manman giggled lim angrily retorted you know very well she cannot take back that money leet cheerfully replied then i have no choice the crown prince slapped leet and shouted don't be so smug sooner or later she will make you pay for your arrogance with that he hurriedly left outside tran vomark bowed and said walk slowly your highness the crown prince then the door was closed manman fiercely defended her husband saying that dog crown prince if I'd known he'd insult you I should have made him impotent so he couldn't curse while lying in bed without the strength to insult anyone seeing this lit smiled contentedly then he pinched her cheek playfully and said it's fine I'm not angry why are you so upset that he insulted me the atmosphere suddenly turned sweet lit flattered let me help you calm down he passionately kissed her late at night the two embraced each other as they slept manman curiously asked your highness now now that you're in conflict with the crown prince what do you think he'll do next lit hugged her tightly and said perhaps he'll start taking action against you to make you help resolve the tang jong case hearing this manman smiled smugly then i can play with him who told him to dare bully my husband the next day manman was practicing martial arts in the garden yelling fiercely ah suddenly she noticed a figure behind her manman smiled smugly and kicked backward ah that kick directly caused the person behind to cry out in pain falling straight into the bushes manman stopped fighting surprise who's the how did someone suddenly appear behind me are you all right she approached slightly surprised oh your highness the crown prince it's you manman thought unhappily i should have kicked him again that scoundrel lim stood up painfully groaning lim groaned in pain now seeing lim's miserable state mom and smiled smugly to herself feigning concern she asked your highness the crown prince are you all right he said embarrassedly i'm fine but this time your actions have truly wounded my heart man man shouted excitedly wounded your heart you're the one who wounded my heart i was just practicing martial arts here it's you who suddenly appeared and almost caused me to injure myself hurting you in the process you're still falsely accusing me man man turned away in grievance if you feel i've hurt you then i'll leave seeing this limb held her back quage and wait he called out in pain groaning i'm Manman stopped and asked your highness the crown prince if you have something to say say it quickly I don't want to be falsely accused again Lim approached and coaxed don't be angry it's my fault I appeared behind you so I got kicked it's all my fault I won't falsely accuse you again Manman didn't calm down and reproached further I can't accept the crown prince's apology what exactly do you want me to do to forgive you seeing he achieved his goal Manman smiled slightly she turned back cheerfully I want the crown prince 
attempts to dismiss consort's shoe from the palace Lim asked in surprise why dismiss her she hasn't committed any offense you can't dismiss her at will moreover your relationship with her isn't very good why would you want her to become someone discarded by her husband man man said sadly but I don't like that sister if the crown prince doesn't agree then forget it seeing this. Lilim blushed thinking to himself is she jealous Manman said dejectedly I seem to have thought too much man sadness Lim felt distressed Lim then consoled her wait a moment for a man to have multiple wives is normal not to mention you're the crown prince you can't have only one woman by side moreover the emperor has many women around him Manman smiled innocently and said but I don't like a man having too many women around him sooner or later I will drive away all the women around the emperor was astonished upon hearing this he was perplexed and insisted on asking if she wanted to drive away all those women do you want to monopolize the emperor and me why this sudden desire to possess him he angrily questioned her about her feelings for the emperor who do you like more manman answered without hesitation can i like like both hearing this limbs face turned black with anger of course not you have to choose between me and the emperor manman angrily reproached him why are you being so petty why must you force me to make a choice do you want to see me unable to choose and suffer wouldn't that pain you hearing this Lim angrily retorted you're trying to have it both ways and still argue Manman of course explained I'm not trying to have it both ways I'm just giving you both a chance to have me this way neither of you will suffer the pain of being rejected in love I only want what's best for you both you should forgive me hearing this Lim shouted angrily who do you think you are how dare you brazenly say you want to monopolize two men at the same time you're truly shameless Manman said sadly how can you scold me like this moved closer and growled not only do I want to scold you but suddenly he pushed her down and continued I want to violate you right here he looked at her fallen on the ground with a blackened face you shameless woman I originally wanted to do this step by step gradually made making you submit and belong to me but now it seems unnecessary with you for a woman like you I should just take you directly as he shouted and lunged forward man man laughed scornfully and said take man man I'd like to see you try she raised her fist so Lim you still don't understand the consequences he hastily pounced on her but was immediately struck by man man's fist in a vital area his scream of pain echoed far and and Wyden clutched his lower body in agony lying curled up on the ground unable to stand Manman mocked him triumph triumphantly your highness did you feel my deadly kick it was a masterful strike was it not Lim angrily shouted you I will definitely not let you off Manman still said smugly who's the Lim's anger flared at her brazenness he shouted angrily of course I'm calling you idiot Manman laughed so the scoundrel is me as she finished speaking the crown prince's face turned pale Manman kicked him squarely in the groin again and his agonizing scream rang out once more Manman didn't dare look at that scene and covered her face she cheerfully hummed and left behind her were intermittent groans you stay there in pain while I return Manman saw palace guards coming Manman thought to herself with the guards here she quietly took out from her sleeve a vial of peppermint oil applied it to her eyes and tousled her her hair instantly transforming into a tearful beauty she pretended to have been assaulted sobbing her eyes were red and swollen her hair disheveled she sighed to herself and her sorrowful cries rang out woohoo the prince heard the pitiful call it turned around puzzled manman with tears in her eyes weakly entered the gate suddenly manman rushed into his embrace crying out your highness save me immediately waved his hand ordering the servants to withdraw manman continued her passionate act sobbing after the servants withdrew and closed the door Lee finally spoke affectionately tell me did you do something to the crown prince again Manman happily embraced Lee your highness is so perceptive she then cheerfully recounted everything it went went like this after narrating for a while she became worried and said although I pretended to be grieved when I came in just now my kick was no light matter I may have disabled the crown prince's manhood will he go to the emperor and empress dowager to accuse me Lee held her in his arms and said domineeringly then don't let him live to return for harming my wife I will definitely not let him off Manman looked at the prince with gratitude the two gazed at each other affectionately Lo was about to kiss her when suddenly she exclaimed excitedly wait shouldn't we send someone to check the crown prince's injury first what if the situation takes a favorable turn he said helplessly rest assured I've already sent someone then impatiently kissed her directly now let me see if you're injured or not the two embraced each other passionately as for Lelam he said with a pale face what?
Did you say your highness I can't have an heir in the future? The imperial physician knelt down Lam gritted his teeth and called for him and man inside L ignored him unconcerned by the crown princes shouting quickly hand over him and man to me man man worriedly looked out the window the crown prince had indeed come for her has he really been disabled she weakly fell into his embrace your highness save me he put down his book and said reassuringly he gently lifted her up and comforted her he's just a paper tiger with me here no no one can harm you hearing this her face instantly bloomed like a flower really then can I go tease him now he was at a loss for words then indulgently said go ahead she smiled and caressed his head he I'm just kidding we have to leave tomorrow it's better not to provoke him further he held her close as they secretly peeked outside through the window the two of them gazed out together that's right we'll go tomorrow we should start taking action her body became tense hearing him mention the two words taking action she leaned closer to him silently thinking does the prince really want to turn his back on the crown prince in the palace plot the crown prince failed in his rebellion and attempted suicide out of desperation he killed himself the image of the crown prince rushing with a sword to kill the emperor suddenly appeared in her mind but the story hasn't developed to the point where the crown prince rebels if the crown prince dies she helplessly turned back I should have known better I should have killed him directly she sighed thinking like that if the emperor blames anyone it's only me he heard her in thoughts he pinched her cheek and said all right don't think too much tomorrow I'll teach you how to ride a horse go to sleep now not knowing his plan beforehand she looked at him and said riding a horse being favored and naughty she happily looked forward to the next day her feet quickly moved to the bed time to go to sleep she jumped onto the bed patted the space next to her and said your highness come sleep quickly we have to wake up early tomorrow his eyes were full of tenderness his lips curved slightly as he replied okay then the two of them hugged and slept sweet dreams your highness his deep voice replied sweet dreams early morning the next day at the county manor the birds were chirping incessantly kindly asked the lady are you afraid of horseback riding today she replied no your highness I'm not afraid at that moment the crown prince appeared waving the fan in his hand he called out flower but the shameless crown prince wants to act as a nuisance he came before them and questioned where are you two going with such enthusiasm lit didn't want to waste time dragging things out with this person he immediately took her hand and pulled her away let go he coldly turned his back and left don't waste time manman didn't dare argue she obediently followed but her eyes still glanced at the other person the crown prince's expression showed displeasure as he said you just wait the manman didn't forget to provoke the crown prince she made an ugly face making the crown prince furious the attendants brought the horse manman excitedly ran over and said happily is this the horse I'm going to ride it's so big he asked with concern are you afraid since it was her first time riding a horse she had no fear she kept shaking her head with one arm around her slender waist he lifted her up and said get on the horse she successfully climbed onto the horses back unable to hide her delight the two of them expressed their affection freely manman said I can reach out he replied okay one teasing the other responding make the crown prince behind them furious but he couldn't do anything except curse the couple men when and lit happily left together leaving the furious crown prince watching them leave the attendant received orders and reported to the crown prince the crown crown prince whispered to the attendant is everything settled satisfactorily the attendant seriously replied I have followed your instructions everything has been marked the crown prince's gaze revealed everything a dark plan flashed in the crown prince's mind he thought silently despite Pickable couple this time you both must die you thought you were the chicken but you're the grain lit had already guessed the crown prince's intentions he smiled faintly and whispered the worm has taken the bait knight felt the carriage rumbled along inside manman groaned in pain now ow my mouth hurts so much lit approached carrying a small medicine bottle helplessly saying let me take a look at you he sat down beside her carefully examining her wound helping her he lovingly scolded just horseback riding and you couldn't bear it for a while from now on wake up early with me practice lying still while I apply medicine for you she shyly buried her face in his arm replying okay he parted her clothes unintentionally revealing her tender white legs behind the thin curtain one could see through the intimate scene of the two together in the carriage manman.